tonight. Dan Gatowski along with former Ohio State linebacker Bobby Carpenter. And Bobby, the challenges for this Maryland program the offseason were just tremendous. They rallied, though, that game against Texas last week. They really stepped up and delivered. They really stepped up, and it speaks volumes about Matt Canada as an offensive coordinator and now the interim head coach dealing with the loss of a player, having to play a blue blood like Texas. DJ Durkin, the head coach, being on administrative leave. And then on top of that, you have to deal with the weather delay. Texas was fired up coming off last year's upset, but they were able to get it together, harness all of that emotion that was spilling out before the game and able to come back, take Texas' best shot, and then finish the game incredibly strong the Terps fought every inch in this game and here's the pick that would seal it for them they won the turnover battle and that's what took them to that five-point win over ranked Texas Bowling Green some question marks for them Bobby but they've got some big playmakers that need to deliver today well there's two great guys that they can lean on sophomores Jared Dagey and Andrew Clare very talented skill position players Jared Dagey's brother is the wide receivers coach he's grew up in this offense he understands that there's no one better to run it than him and then when you look at Drew Clare a very talented back high levels of speed explosive you saw what he was able to do last week against Oregon 25 rushes 116 yards he is a power Power five back playing in the Mid-American Conference. I believe he'll be able to rip off some long runs today. The Falcons started well against Oregon last week, but could not sustain it. They get a crack at a Big Ten team today. Our kickoff when we come back. Don't juggle your home life and work life without it. Don't skip that office meeting for a board meeting without it. Don't keep it real. Keep it going or simply keep it in the family without it. And don't turn that business trip into an overdue family trip without it. The more you live between life and business, the more you need someone at your back. The powerful backing of American Express. Don't live life without it. The game is bigger than quick hands, breakaways, or finger rolls. It's bigger than layouts, sellouts, and shooting the lights out. It's bigger than cannons, bells, and wagon wheels in any stadium, field, or school. Because when you play the game for the integrity of the sport, with character, honor, and heart, the game is bigger than just a game. It's a foundation for life. Monday Night Football is back. First, Sam Donald debuts in Motown to take on the Lions. Then, Todd Gurley and the Rams battle the Raiders. Jets Lions at 710, then Rams Raiders at 1015, Monday on ESPN. El Nino? Meat sweats? Aliens. That's the one, okay? And here, a comment is no one because of the alien invasion. In unrelated news, ESPN is giving fans with the best excuses for ditching work free tickets to a day game. And there's nobody here with me. The U.S. Open Men's Championship, tomorrow at 4 on ESPN. This is what the postseason feels like. Two Goliaths squaring up. Can you feel it? Masters Red Sox, tomorrow at 8 on ESPN. Cool temperatures and overcast skies here in Bowling Green. Weather should not be a factor at all today here between Maryland and Bowling Green. Well, it's been anything but easy for Maryland football in the weeks and months leading up to this 2018 season, dealing with both tragedy and investigations. And here's the timeline as things unfolded. August 10th was really when things took a big time uh, step for the worst when uh, ESPN reporting the alleged toxic coaching culture surrounding this year's Maryland football team. And after that, it was uh, a more administrative stuff, which uh, you can see here has uh, really thrown a monkey wrench into the, the football program. And, and Bobby, what is it that a, a team tries to accomplish? What is Matt Canada? you know, it's really trying to do right now just to kind of get everybody on the same page. Well, I think Matt Canada, what he's trying to do is try to develop 
some certainty with this team so that each and every day they come out here, they know what to expect. That's how you develop consistency with your practices, consistency with your performance, and consistency with your play. If you don't know what's going to happen from one day to the next, who's going to be coaching, who your trainer's going to be, who are going to be your strength coaches, it's very, very tough to operate. So I give Matt Canada a ton of credit for taking a very difficult situation, being dropped in. His first head coaching assignment you know, of his career, he's bounced around a lot of, as a coordinator, but now being thrown into this, having to take on a very difficult opponent in Texas, having to acknowledge the loss of a player. You see the emotions pouring out. They get the big win. The question today will be, how are they going to be able to bounce back from that, taking on a Bowling Green Falcons team that obviously isn't the University of Texas? Let's jump to the other sideline. Mike Jenks in his third year. Uh, some challenges for his program, too. They're pretty much related to X's and O's, though. What's your take on what he's done so far here at BG? You know, Mike Jenks is in his third season here. He was at the Texas Tech in the air raid offense with Cliff Kingsbury. He has a great understanding of what they're trying to do. He knows what he wants to get done, but hasn't had a lot of success here. Only 6-19 and 19 in his first three seasons. They've got some players now. They've got some horses. Jared Daggy, very talented young quarterback. Andrew Clare, we saw at the beginning. And then also Scott Miller, the guy who's looking to become a three-time All-Mac receiver, number 21, that they're going to move all around today. They need to need to start getting some wins and a great program victory to be able to get a win over a Big Ten team. So Maryland wins the coin toss and they are going to go on offense first So Bowling Green's gonna get a chance to kick things off here And again, it's uh, a, a, All things considered a good day weather wise here At Doyd Perry Stadium. It's a little bit cooler rain doesn't seem to be too prominent and this football game is underway. Kickoff dropped in inside the five, picked up, and Maryland gets a decent return out to the 20, and the Terps are on offense to start this football game. Uh, and that might be a little bit of the emotion there coming in. Ty Johnson losing a little bit of focus at the beginning. You see uh, Kaysom Hill coming out now. Young player, redshirt freshman, injured last year. Had a big game against Texas. Now he's going to have to follow that up with another big game in his first full season as a starter. Maryland's got weapons on offense. We will ID them as this first possession unfolds. They start at their own 20. They stay on the ground and a bounce outside run here for Ty Johnson. Stopped just shy of the 40-yard line. One opening is all it took for a big game for Maryland. And Ty Johnson, their big, powerful, explosive back, all Big Ten player last year, one of the leaders of this offense. You see almost 1,000 yards rushing last year, 6.4 on the ground. He's a big physical load at 212 pounds as a senior, and he's someone that this Bowling Green Falcons offense is going to have to contain. That's a gain of 18 yards. The Terps looking good. Now a quarterback keep. Nothing doing that time. A wall of white shutting out Kasim Hill and the Falcons defensively step up. And that's that zone read that you saw Maryland using a lot last week. They're going to try to run this a little bit like the wishbone offense. And talking to Carl Pellini, he was very concerned about the assignment football of his defense. Everybody has to do their job to try to eliminate the big play. It's a loss of, looks like about four yards, brings up second down and 14. And Hill's going to throw, rolling out of pressure, complete, but a tackle right after the catch. The catch made by Johnson, but BG right there to shut that down. And that's Brandon Harris, one of the captains, impact player. He moves all around for this Falcons defense. He's one of the big-time guys that has to step up and play, and he does a great job here of tracking Ty Johnson in the backfield, using that athleticism to get him down, and they're trying to move around a little bit. Third and long for the Terps. Bowling Green trying to feed off the crowd and the energy here on their home opener. Hill's got a lot of time. Deep throw in the middle. Did he hold it? And did he get a first down? Looks like he got it. Did he get enough for the first, though? They got to look at that spot. And 
I don't think where they're marking that ball is enough for a first down. So it's a couple of yards short. And Bowling Green able to force the putting unit on. And what you're going to see here, it's a cover two defense. So behind the middle linebacker is a huge void. They're going to run one guy underneath. And then they're going to run one deep over the top and try to bang it in. And you see it right there. There's the wrap play. And did a great job sliding it in. Just wasn't able to turn the corner with DJ Turner and pick up that extra yard. Marcus Milton on the punt return for Bowling Green, and he will catch it, fair catch it, at his 16-yard line. Well, that's a good start for BG. They give up the early run, but their defense clamps down. And again, this is kind of the script, Bobby, that Bowling Green had last week. They started well against Oregon, but they just couldn't sustain it throughout the game. Well, they want to run this bend but don't break defense. Eliminate the big plays, force teams to drive the football. The thing is, if you miss a tackle against a team like Oregon, they're going to make you pay. But Bowling Green, very good corners, able to lock it down right there, make a negative yardage play, and then able to convert that once they forced Maryland to get behind the chains. Jared Dagey under center. A lot of potential in this young player. Oh, he gets pounded. Held the football. A blindside takedown. Isaiah Davis came in hot and put him down. A big sack for Maryland. Isaiah Davis coming off the edge right here. Unblocked. That's something that this Bowling Green line has got to recognize. He's their middle linebacker. Played outside backer the last couple years. A lot of speed. A lot of explosion. Jared Dagey's expecting to pick it up. An eight-yard loss on the sack. They'll stay on the ground. This is Claire trying to get wide. Gets a little bit, maybe a few yards, chased out on that far side. It's a great job by Maryland, able to string this play out there. Andrew St. Clair has good, Andrew Claire has good speed, but wasn't able to really turn the corner and pick up anything significant. And this is what Mike Jinks wanted to stay out of. These third and long situations, Maryland's able to mix up the front. They're able to bring pressure from different ways and possibly confuse the young quarterback in Deggie. Third and 16 from their own 11. Deggie throwing and too far. Throwing right into that sideline. That's Pudavong, the intended wideout. Good play call, just to throw a little bit too strong. Maryland rolling their defense to the three receiver side at Putavong, the X over there by himself. Recognize the single coverage, that's the right read, where to go with the football. Putavong had a step, just a little too much on it for Deggie. And the Terps are poised for good field position. Grant Tinnerman standing in his own end zone. And he will get an excellent punt off. Caught at the 40. Oh, and a great tackle. And the Terps with Tavon Jacobs on the return, but it's a good special teams cover by BG. Terps football when we come back to Bowling Green. ESPN is giving fans with the best excuses for ditching work free tickets to a day game. And there's nobody here with me. I'm alone. El Nino? Meat sweats? Aliens. That's the one, okay? And here, a comment is no one because of the alien invasion. In unrelated news, ESPN is giving fans with the best excuses for ditching work free tickets to a day game. And there's nobody here with me. Coming in. Can you feel it? This is what the postseason feels like. Two Goliaths squaring up with their eyes on a same prize. The biggest names in the game under the bright lights. Flexing championship muscle. This is a glimpse into the future. Can you feel it? Sunday Night Baseball. Astros Red Sox tomorrow at 8 on ESPN. Telecast presented by Taco Bell. The U.S. Open Men's Championship. Tomorrow at 4 on ESPN. Monday Night Football. Jets, Lions, then Rams, Raiders. Monday on ESPN.
Terps football, their second possession about to start here. Bobby, last week we knew the mindset for Maryland for that game was very unusual given all the circumstances leading up to the game. What about their mindset today? How is it different? We always worried about that emotional letdown. The honoring of Jordan McNair last week, playing Texas at home, big environment. Now you go on the road to play a mid-American school, and you're worried if you're going to be as focused. And maybe you're seeing some of these penalties here, a fumble on the opening kickoff, and you know maybe just some missed assignments, and you're worried about your guys' level of focus trying to come back down. Offense number 80, five-yard penalty, first down trying to come back down after a big emotional win like that and then get back up on Saturday can be very difficult. Professionally, not a big deal. When you're dealing with 18 to 22 year olds, it can be more of a challenge. So the Terps get backed up to their own 32. Seeing some more motion here. That is a staple of the Matt Canada offense. Play fake, Hill's gonna have time to throw, now he runs. And, oh, great ankle tackle, stops him at the 35. That's Jerry McBride coming up and making the big play for BG. Jerry McBride, one of the leaders of this defense with the captains out there, one of the best tacklers you're gonna find in the back end. He's sitting here, Casey Mills sitting in the pocket, probably leaves a little bit early, and a great open field tackle right there by the Bowling Green defense. As you can see, McBride fly up there, Kill the motor, kill the legs. They get three yards back, makes it second and 12. See more motion. Hand up, up the middle. They had a big run early, had a breakout run here for Lorenzo Harrison. Inside the 30, pushed out. Boy, I'll tell you, the two big runs that we've seen so far have both happened pretty much in the same spot. So you look at Lorenzo uh, Harrison, didn't get the ball much last week. And unfortunately, they want to get him involved. And you can see these motions and shifts. They take a toll on you. Nobody in the hole right there. Opens up big. There needs to be a second level player filling, whether it's a safety or a linebacker. And Matt Kennedy talks about it. Everybody likes to go confusion with the up-tempo. When he got to Wisconsin, he realized you can also utilize that same confusion with the motion and shifts. And that's what he's going to do today, and that's what he did a lot over his last couple coaching years. They're going to review this play. It's a 38-yard run for Harrison. And Tom Herbert is our replay official today. I think they just want to make sure where he stepped out. Well, that's probably it. It looked like he was you know, skating the sideline there for a while. Could potentially take a couple of yards off of this, but... You know, there's no excuse at all when you go, and, and this is what Carl Pelini was worried about, the mental fatigue of your players trying to stay locked in and stay in gap sound and start motioning and start shifting. You guys can sit there and get in a bad situation. First down and 10. Good call by the officials. They've got this new rat Mac replay system that they spent a million dollars on, and last week they were touting its efficiency. Pretty impressed with how quick that that was able to come back in, get the play taken care of, and keep this flow of the game going. So two big runs have been the starting point for Maryland's offense. This one, though, takes them fairly deep into BG territory at the Falcons' 27. More shifts. Hill, they give. And they get another good run. This time it's Harrison again, still up and inside the 10. And this Maryland deep offensive line really starting to impose their will on this Falcon D line. Getting a great push at the beginning, a couple motions, shifts, confuse the back guys on the back end. And then you see obviously a huge push up front. And a flag right about where the tackle was made. Illegal block in the back. Offense number 64. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. That's tough. That's a wasted opportunity. That's a huge run. But what you're going to see here, the shifts over here, everyone comes over to the top. You wipe that off. Then you see the push right here coming down. Huge wall. Big lane to run through. And you watch Lorenzo Harrison do the rest. 
When you're an offensive lineman and you're running downfield and you don't have anyone to block, that's trouble. It's trouble. Sometimes as the running back, you want to get him out of the way. Those guys are slowing <laughs> exactly. you down. From the 21-yard line, Terps have been hitting hard on the ground so far. They'll go back to Harrison. Space for him. A flag goes down, but he's in the end zone. Is it a Maryland touchdown? We'll see the flag thrown. Two of them were thrown at about the 21-yard line where the ball was snapped. Well, it was thrown right where the cutback came, and that probably indicates to me an illegal cut block or a hold there by probably one of the center, probably the center or one of the guards. And Matt Canada has to be losing his mind when his offense is moving, and you see all this yellow laundry on the field. First of all, shot block. Offense, number 64 and number 70. 15 yard penalty, first down. Sean Christie and Brendan Moore. So what you probably saw there is a high-low. Sean Christie, Brendan Moore, right here going high-low, getting cuts. And when you have something like that, as you can see right there, that's a lead we cannot engage with someone and then come low with another offensive lineman. Guys lose their knees that way. And that is not something that Matt Cannon is going to be happy about because now you're staring at a first and 20 after two big plays. And they've moved backwards to the 36 for Bowling Green. Hill's going to throw a screen right over the middle, complete, but a good stop. Falcons cover it. And that's a great job by the Bowling Green defense rallying right there. The shifts, the motions, they try to confuse you, get you moving around. Sometimes you bail out a little early. And on first and 10, see if 20, to see if they can get some of that yardage back. And unfortunately, they weren't able to. A gain of only three yards on that successful screen pass. And flags fly again. 12 men in the huddle. Offense, 12 men in formation. Five-yard penalty, second down. So, Dan, when you ask me some of the worries of the emotional letdown, how do you get up for this game? These are the type of penalties and execution plays that are going to drive Matt Cannon to crazy because they, they feel like they're a better team. They're able to pound the football and cut blocks, holding downfield, procedure penalties. A lot of these things are mental mistakes that are very, very difficult to handle as a head coach. Yeah, physical mistakes are a whole different ball game than mental mistakes. And again, this is a completely different environment for Maryland than what they were in last week playing at FedEx Field. Second and 21, they're gonna run and slipping on the wet turf is Anthony McFarland. You know the Terps wanna keep pounding in that running game, but traction an issue there and a, a, what could have been a big run falls short so Anthony McFarland the fourth ball carrier for this Terrapins offense today loses his footing right there negates potentially a bigger game but this Maryland offense they had double digit ball carriers last week against Texas Texas that Canada really loves to spread it around third and 18 big coverage down Hill's got time deep ball incomplete Bad communication, looking for Tavon Jacobs. Jacobs not in the right area, incomplete. And the Terps drive looked very good, but penalties turned it back the other way. There's not a whole lot in the playbook for a third and 18, trying to work the middle of the field right there to miscommunication with quarterback and receiver. They had two deep, open in the middle of the field, and unfortunately couldn't get it done. And now you're in no man's land, forcing to have to punt from, your own, from the 36-yard line going in. If this is a touchback, it's going to be a net punt of 16 yards. Four Maryland penalties on that drive. And that is not winning football. And you think about two of the penalties negated 10 plus yard runs. Mm. On the kicking team, the penalty is <laughs> declined. Fourth down. One of my favorite attempts. We're going to take a delay a game, give us more space. Mike Jinks correctly declines it. He wants to see him bang this ball in the end zone. Way Lee's punting on the short field for Maryland. And he'll try to bring it short. Fair catch called for at the 11-yard line. 
And by Marcus Milton. Bowling Green dodges a bullet. The Falcons on offense. A scoreless game when we come back to BG. The powerful backing of American Express. Don't live life without it. Come from small towns, suburbs, or sprawling cities. Come and belong. Take root, and together we will make this space our own. We'll thrive, master our skills, live in the moment. The conversations after class ends, where real relationships begin, connections are made. Becoming a part of something bigger, bigger than ourselves. Belong, stand out, go far at Bowling Green State University. Tomorrow, resurgent two-time winner Novak Djokovic faces 2009 champ Juan Martín Del Potro. Past U.S. Open winners battle for championship glory. The Men's Championship tomorrow at 4 on ESPN. This is what the postseason feels like. Two Goliaths squaring up with their eyes on the same prize. Can you feel it? Astros Red Sox tomorrow at 8 on ESPN. ESPN is giving fans with the best excuses for ditching work free tickets to a day game. And there's nobody here with me. I'm alone. Monday Night Football is back. Kicking off the season with a huge doubleheader. Jets Lions at 7-10, then Rams Raiders at 10-15. Monday on ESPN. The U.S. Open Men's Championship. Tomorrow at 4 on ESPN. It's military appreciation night here at Bowling Green. The Falcons showing their appreciation with special special helmets and decals for tonight's game. The helmet features a stars and stripes Falcon decal along with the number 111 on the back of the helmet. That represents the number of students at Bowling Green who have died in the line of service. And if you look closely at the orange stripe down the center of the helmet, you'll see all 111 names of those individuals who made the ultimate sacrifice. What a great way to honor our nation's veterans. Falcons football, bad field position. Play fake on first down, underthrown, complete. Did he hold that? Scott, Scott Miller was the target. Did he hold it? I think Scott Miller was able to hold on for about a one yard gain, but Darnell Savage was closing in quickly. You gotta watch, you think you can get away with those passes if you're Jared Dagey, but this Maryland defense is gonna be very aggressive, and they're gonna be all over Scott Miller, who is the number one target. 13 catches last week. They run on second down, and a face mask coming against Maryland. Thank goodness. Woo. Not Canada, not happy. Mm -mm. Personal foul, face mask, defense number nine. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Byron Coward, the defensive end. You see Claire mm, shooting up right the middle. Coward does a good job getting in the backfield. You just got to be careful. Give him 15 yards, dig out of the hole. You get a first down. Bowling Green will be able to flip the field here. Worst case, give and give some better field position to their defense. Ball moves to the 28-yard line. They keep it on the ground, and they try to run with Andrew Clear, but he can't spin away. The Terps stop him defensively. Adam McLean, big nose guard, number 91 in the middle, is not going to be blocked. 305 pounds, athletic guy inside. This is what's going to cause this Bowling Green Falcon offense trouble. They're going to have to develop the passing game a little bit to open, this, open up that run game for Clare. The first pass attempt by Daigie, he got sacked big time. Let's see what they do here. They're going to throw a little bit of time open, caught by Quinton Morris, stays up, finally taken down inside Terps territory. That's a big throw right there by Jared Daigie. Seeing two deep safeties running a little bit of an in, a little bit of a rack play. Does a great job putting the ball right on the money, right over top. 
and then Morris does the rest. A little run after the catch, getting to midfield. That's a 20-yard gain. Correct that, 22 yards into Maryland territory. Oh, nothing doing on that run with Claire. And that's Antoine Brooks, the hero from the Texas game, who was able to polish it off with the game-winning interception. He's a guy that's all over the place. He's their nickelback, firing in, unblocked off the edge. They've got to find a way to get a hat on that guy. That's a loss of four back to the 47. Deggy a little bit confused on the signal from the sidelines. It's communication issues. A lot of time here. Deep ball and caught far sideline. Forced out of bounds after the grab, but Pudavang, sorry, Pudavong makes the catch right in front of that BG bench. And that is a big time throw when you're going almost to the opposite hash all the way to the sideline. That ball is traveling almost 40 yards in the air against a very, very talented secondary in Maryland. Big time throw by Jared Deggy. 15 yards on the catch. Falcons starting to get a little bit more settled down offensively. They'll stay on the ground and run right into two Maryland jerseys. Bryce and Denley on that carry. That's more pressure by Maryland trying to dictate the tempo. They do not want to let Claire get going. That's that will open up the running game. It'll be more difficult to stop the pass as well. You want to keep this BG offense one-dimensional. They're going to continue to put pressure on Jared Dagey to make the big throws. Dagey with that big sack early, but now he's had three straight completions. That's going to settle him down a little bit. Second and ten. Play fake pressure. They complete it here to Denley, who stays up and gets to the 30. And Mike Jinks very high on Bryce Denley. And he wants Jared Deggie hanging in there, taking the big shot from Brooks, getting rid of the ball. And then you see him dumping it to Denley. He was originally a Texas Tech commit towards ACL in high school. Comes to Bowling Green here with Mike Jinks. So he has... He has big time potential, power five potential when you see him with the ball in his hand. BG on the move at the Maryland 29 yard line. Long snap. They run on the ground. This is Claire to about the 25. They only need a yard. They're able to hammer it in there with Claire, pick up the first down, keep this drive alive. Falcons offense has some momentum now. And you start to see the Terrapins defensive line, hands on their hips, getting a little bit tired because this Falcons team runs up tempo. They don't motion at all. They want to get the plays in and get going. Maybe most importantly, hey, give Bowling Green's defense a rest. They've been hit pretty hard here in this first quarter, but now they're getting a chance to get a breather. First and 10. BG at the Maryland 25. Wouldn't be a surprise to see him take a shot at the end zone right here. They fake the reverse, and they run it with Claire wide. He's got a little space inside and forced out at about the four-yard line. So the 25-yard line going in, they call that the strike zone. A lot of coaches would like to take a shot at the end zone in some way, whether it's play action to the end zone or sometimes a trick play, the fake reverse right there to Scott Miller, and you see Claire turn on the Jets and take it inside the 10. They marked the ball at the nine-yard line. That's where he was forced out. Daggy play fake, end zone, back shoulder incomplete. He wanted Pudavong. Well, Pudavong, the big, tall, 6'5", 200-pound target. He's the red zone threat. He is that X receiver who's always going to be stationary. Pretty nice throw, but some terrific defense right there by Marcus Lewis. Chests him up. Refs are letting him play. Solid defense. Derek Pudavong, 6'5", 200 pounds. That is a big league target. Here's Daigie again, throwing end zone incomplete, and a flag comes down. Looking like they're going to get Tino Ellis, former wide receiver, all over, all over his back right there. Well thrown ball by Deggy, give your guy a chance. And they're going to be first and ten, half the distance, or first and goal, half the distance. Fire to the back 
holding defense number seven. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. So you look at these wide receivers on the outside, Quentin Moore, 6'4", 223, Poudavong, 6'5", 200 pounds, and then you have the smaller Scott Miller in the slot who's going to work the inside, but some size advantages on the perimeter for this Bowling Green offense. A great drive so far for Bowling Green. They're at the four-yard line. They'll run. This is clear and tries to bully his way inside to about maybe the three-yard line. I don't think he got more than one yard at that. Maybe he picked up a yard, trying to still run the ball to keep this defense honest. Maryland has the size advantage up front. They're big, they're physical. They're gonna run more of a three-four look, but they're three big guys inside. They're some man-eaters now. And this is where I look for Bowling Green. Why not test the perimeter again? Go back to some of your tall receivers, see if they can make a play. Coming from the highly accurate Jared Deggie. Claire ran for 113 yards last week against Oregon. Second and goal from the four. They're going to throw Deggie to the side and taken down. They completed to Dorian Hendricks, but Hendricks could not get free after the catch. Try to run a little play action there. Slipped the fullback, H back to the flat. Wasn't able to turn the corner. I love the play call. I would have liked to have seen that ball go to Bryson Denley or Andrew Claire, though. Get a little more speed, able to catch it and turn the corner. Big play here, third and goal from the three. When you get in the red zone against a team like Maryland, you need touchdowns, not field goals. Let's see what the Falcons dial up here. Daigie throwing, slant. Scott Miller. Touchdown, Bowling Green. Who's Jerry Daigie gonna go to in the red zone when he needs a play? His two-time All-Mac receiver, Scott Miller. 166 yards and two touchdowns against Oregon. He's getting it done against Maryland, too. And you can see right here the slant coming inside. Boom. Gets it done. Inside the defender. Accurate throw and a great catch by Scott Miller. Extra point is coming. And it is right through. And the Falcons feeling good after a big, long offensive drive ends in a touchdown. 7 nothing is our lead for the Falcons. Maryland football when we continue. At the University of Maryland, we believe that education has the extraordinary power to improve the life of every person on earth. We are confronting the most pressing challenges of our time, vigorously pursuing the discovery of new knowledge, integrating art and science, and developing the next generation of global citizens. We are the University of Maryland, and that is our fearless idea. Hashtag Ask Scott Mondays, baby. Hashtag Ask Scott Monday. Charles was here. That's Charles would do it like this. I'm making an ass here. Every play is for a championship. We'll be ready. We know we got our hands full. This is what the postseason feels like. Two Goliaths squaring up. Can you feel it? Astros Red Sox, tomorrow at 8 on ESPN. playoff is coming and from your game face to your game day rituals everything you do matters Whoa! no pressure monday night football jets lions then rams raiders monday on espn
Bowling Green, well, they're settled in now officially. The long drive and the touchdown throw from Daigie. And it's a 7 0 Bowling Green lead. What you saw there was a 14 play, 7 minute and 14 second meat grinder drive by that Bowling Green offense, give their defense a rest and really begin to grind on a bigger, more physical Maryland D. Nate Needham kicking off for the Falcons. And he will boot to Ty Johnson at his five. Johnson getting wrapped up at about the 25. Well, the Mid-American Conference always playing some, uh, some tough games out of conference today. The one we want to talk about with Eastern Michigan, the Eagles go on the road and win at Purdue 20 to 19. Western Michigan got railroaded at Michigan and uh, Wisconsin and New Mexico. Uh, there's your Badger score. The Eastern Michigan win, though, Bobby, that's the second year in a row Chris Creighton has taken his team into a Big Ten stadium and come out with a victory. He's done a great job up there at Eastern Michigan. They've never had a ton of success in the MAC. And Creighton has done a good job establishing a program that is confident, that feels that they can go anywhere and win. The Terps keep it on the ground on first down. And Fleet Davis is the carrier. They get a couple yards. And again, this is, you know, Maryland's take out the penalties. It's been a good first quarter. It has been. And Bowling Green's philosophy, you, know, you keep going back to it. They're going to double routes down the field. They don't want to give up the big play. And right now you're looking at a first quarter. And you feel like as well as Maryland had played at times, was really dominated by this Falcons offense. And that one drive to help their time of possession tremendously. At the end of the day, the scoreboard is the only thing that matters. The Falcons up 7-0 on the Terps. Second quarter football when we come back. backing of American Express. Don't live life without it. The game is bigger than quick hands, breakaways, or finger rolls. It's bigger than layouts, sellouts, and shooting the lights out. It's bigger than cannons, bells, and wagon wheels in any stadium, field, or school. Because when you play the game with the integrity of the sport, with character, honor, and heart, the game is bigger than just a game. It's a foundation for life. Monday Night Football is back. Kicking off the season with a huge doubleheader. Jets Lions at 7-10, then Rams Raiders at 10-15. Monday on ESPN. El Nino? Meat sweats? Aliens. That's the one, okay? And here, a comment is no one because of the alien invasion. In unrelated news, ESPN is giving fans with the best excuses for ditching work free tickets to a day game. And there's nobody here with me. The college football playoff is coming. And from your game face to your game day rituals, everything you do matters. No pressure. The U.S. Open Men's Championship, tomorrow at 4 on ESPN. Can you feel it? Astros Red Sox, tomorrow at 8 on ESPN. Yeah, you're in we really like having Aaron around, but we're concerned he takes his name a bit too literally. Oh. Okay. He has to do golf again. Like All rise. The U.S. Open on the ESPN app. Stream first ball to last ball. Download the ESPN app today. Tomorrow, resurgent two-time winner Novak Djokovic faces 2009 champ Juan Martín Del Potro. Past U.S. Open winners battle for championship glory. The Men's Championship tomorrow at 4 on ESPN. ESPN is giving fans with the best excuses for ditching work free tickets to a day game. And there's nobody here with me.
I'm alone. The Terps had a lot of offense in that first quarter, but the only points belong to Bowling Green. Terps football at their own 29-yard line. More motion and shifting from Matt Canada. Hill will hand off, and they stop Ty Johnson. Positive yardage, but not a bunch for Maryland. Big number 50, Jonah Harper. In on the play, extremely high motor defensive end. And Bowling Green doing what they wanted to do, come out here. You know, Maryland's staying on schedule, but they're gonna force them to convert these third and three to third and five situations. This one is third and four. Maryland's running game has been solid. See the Falcon faithful starting to show up and make a little bit of noise. Hill's gonna throw, we've got a whole lot of time, and he'll throw underneath, complete to Davenport, off to the races, into Bowling Green territory. Jarvis Davenport, talented slot receiver, and Maryland knowing they're gonna get made from Bowling Green right here, run some crossers, you can see Casey Hill hanging the pocket, Davenport's man got picked off, Gregory wasn't able to stay with him, have a nice gain on a third and short situation. So that is an 18-yard gain. Check that 19 yards as they move into Falcon territory. That's Maryland's first third down completion so far. They'll run and they will get stuffed. Eh, not quite stuffed, but a pretty good tackle. They get a couple yards after the initial contact. It's a great job there by the Maryland offensive line, changing the line of scrimmage. Doesn't look like a lot, but they're picking up three, four yards on that play, keeping them on schedule, giving your young quarterback a chance, so he's facing those third and shorts, and not the third and eight, third and 12, third and 15, that can get you in trouble. That was a four-yard gain to the Bowling Green 45. Bowling Green substituting a lot up front to get some fresh reserves in there to be able to handle this big Maryland O-line. Hill fakes, throws deep, far side, and well overthrown. He was trying to get Tavon Jacobs, but a little too much heat on that throw. Well, a little pressure up the middle from Devontae Hagler. Doing a great job getting pressure on Kaysom Hill. You know, for a guy that tore his ACL last year, really his first week back last, last game, hasn't played football, a ton of football over the last year and a half. You always have to be worried to get a little pressure on him. Will he be quick to get rid of that ball? Big play here, third down and six. Hill's gonna throw, he'll go to the same spot. And overthrown again, no flag, no interference. And it's going to be Bowling Green football as Maryland's punting unit comes on. Clint Stevens going step for step right there with Jarvis Davenport. Carl Polini, the defensive coordinator for the Falcons, very high. Believes he has two really good corners in Stevens and Gregory. And those guys have played very well throughout the first quarter and early second. Maryland just one of four on third down conversions, and they're punting from the BG 45. Rugby kick, Milton on the return. He will fair catch it inside the 10. No has to wonder if that was one he shouldn't have let go over his head a little bit. A little bit of a dangerous catch right there. You'll see this Falcons offense start from about the six, seven yard line. Falcons football when we continue. So this is a tape ball that Kobe Bryant ripped off his ankle and threw into a trash can at Boston Garden. Very prized possession for me. Um, I got a Hall of Famer's ankle tape. His new show is called Detail. It's on ESPN+. Plus. You know, a lot of people think because uh, I'm a Celtics fan that I wouldn't watch, but there's nothing more fun for me than watching Kobe Bryant break down a Celtics win in great detail. I love it. Can you feel it? Astros Red Sox, tomorrow at 8 on ESPN.
football playoff is coming, and when it comes to who's in, everything you do matters. No pressure. So toot toot is kind of like, I should say, toot toot. That's when somebody's just feeling good about themselves, usually me. I never had a four-game losing streak in eight toot years. Oh, my God. Talk more about yourself. Toot toot. Trying to find that wide receiver the next, I say, Randy Moss. Uh, that should probably be a toot toot and some push-ups. I never get any props. Rex. Toot toot. Monday Night Football is back. Kicking off the season with a huge doubleheader. First, Sam Darnold debuts in Motown to take on Matt Stafford in the Lions. All three phases play together at one heartbeat. Let's go. Then, Todd Gurley looks to build on a dominant 2017 as the Rams invade the black hole to battle Derek Carr and the Raiders. I never thought I'd be back, but here I am and I'm ready to get to work. Monday Night Football, Jets, Lions, then Rams, Raiders. Monday on ESPN. So far, the whiteout here at Bowling Green has been a shutout for the Falcons. Mike Jinx, his coaching resume, very solid. This is a guy who's starting to put this Falcon program back on track. And you've seen this a little bit more, especially out of the state of Texas. Mike Jinx, high school assistant for a decade, eight years as a head coach, national coach of the year finalist, gets on at Texas Tech. And with the success they've had with Cliff Kingsbury in that offense, all of a sudden gets the Bowling Green job in 2016. And you look at some of the coaches that they had churned through here for about the last 12 to 14 years. Guys have been coming here, staying for three to four years, being catapulted to huge opportunities. And Mike Jinks trying to do that here today with a victory over Maryland. There's Daggy's number so far. Again, the big sack on his first throw. But since then, he's been solid. They run on first down, tackle from behind. It looks like there may be another face mask on this play. Andrew Claire on the carry for BG. Number 45. Half the distance to goal. First down. Well, Maryland fans are like, hey, they thank gosh that one is not on us. Well, Maryland's been heavily penalized through this. If you're bowling green, it's not the worst penalty in the world. It's half the distance to the goal. About a three to four yard penalty. Not the end of the world. But now Jared Daigie staying in the orange inside his own end zone, not a place you want to be if you're a quarterback. So they're at their own four. The Falcons have had very poor field position so far. They're going to throw out of the end zone. Caught. Boy, that was a good catch as the Falcons go to Quinton Morris for the completion. And they are right on the edge of that first down marker, actually about three yards short. What a great job here. The pressure coming off the edge. He recognized it, able to throw the dig inside right there. Terrific recognition and an accurate throw by Diggy. Sets up second down and two, so the Falcons get out of their jam. It's a big-time play right there by a sophomore quarterback to recognize it. There's a gain of uh, 13 yards. Now they throw it back the other way. Caught, staying up after the catch. That's Scott Miller. Crafty footwork keeps the play alive, and the Falcons get the first down. Mike Jinks probably held his breath as Scott Miller retreated about two yards and may have given away a first down. With the sweet feet of Miller, he's able to turn the corner, break the tackle of Darnell Savage, get upfield, and pick up a first down. And now this Bowling Green offense is rolling a little bit. From their own 22, quick throw. Oh, I almost don't, he almost got his hand under it. That was not an easy catch, and it's incomplete. Again, the target is Miller. And what's that? what they're doing right now, Bowling Green getting a little play action just a little bit outside of Miller's reach. He catches just about everything. Daigie puts that on the numbers. They're sitting there staring at a second two with a full playbook at their disposal. Now they run. And there isn't much inside for the Falcons there. We're going to bring up third and long. And you see big number 59 right there. Kieran Howard, very, very large athletic defensive end. Able to get a push. Not a lot of room for Claire. 
Mike Jinks trying to get his offense back on track, have a run play, maybe three to four yards, set up a, a third and six, third and seven, more manageable. Still staring at a third and eight. A lot's going to be on Jared Daigie's plate right now. Third and long. Falcons trying to keep their offense on the field. A little bit of motion with Miller. Daigie under pressure underneath and barely caught. But there's nothing after the catch for Pudavong, and the Falcons will have to punt. Right there, Mike Jinks and Scott Miller in motion. That's something that they don't historically do in this offense. But talking to him earlier this week, they wanted to move him around because he knew they knew he's their best guy. Maryland's going to try to take him away, try to slip him underneath, ran a crossing mesh route with Pudavong. Pudavong came open. Unfortunately, it was only for a yard. Fourth and seven. Turp should get good field position. With Tinnerman on to punt, standing at his 10. Look at it, get a low line drive. It takes kind of a bowling green bounce, and the Falcons are going to have to go to defense starting at the Maryland 35. A 7 nothing lead for Bowling Green over Maryland. The ESPN app now with ESPN Plus. Monday Night Football is back. First, Sam Darnold debuts in Motown to take on the Lions. Then, Todd Gurley and the Rams battle the Raiders. Jets-Lions at 7-10. Then, Rams-Raiders at 10-15. Monday on ESPN. Hashtag Ask Out Mondays, baby. Hashtag Ask Out Monday. Charles was here. That's Charles was here like this. To make it an ask. <laughs> The college football playoff is coming. And from your game face to your game day rituals, everything you do matters. No pressure. a rainbow. The all-new Accurate RDX with ELS Studio 3D Sound. Yeah, the elements are not totally football friendly. Wet weather, a little bit of rain, and uh, the Maryland fans not happy, really, with what they've seen so far, especially their offense. It's the six penalties that have happened for Maryland so far that have really derailed them. And if you look at the drive chart right there, they really have had any long drives of substance to be able to wear down this BG offense, although right there you see a nice long run. Tyrell Pigram getting in the game, the backup quarterback, guy who played a lot last year. He was the starter to start the 2017 season, also injured now for the year, getting some run here today. As you can see Pigram right there, 5'11", 205, not quite as big as Hill, but explosive with his legs. You saw him pick up some big yards right there. So Pigram after the run, setting up the Terps inside BG territory. Fumble, a ball on the turf. Falcons swarm on it. I'm not sure who's got it. The Falcons say they do. BG had a shot at it. Signal Bowling Green football. Matt Cameron not happy trying to put in the backup quarterback. Give yourself a little change of pace right there. Pick up 20 yards. 
And then throughout the exchange, you put the ball on the turf. And it looks right there like DJ Turner on the fake gets his elbow up, hits the football. Falcons swarm dive on it. And now they have a short field with a Maryland defense that's been on the field a lot this game. First turnover goes to Bowling Green. And Bobby, in these close games, whoever wins the turnover battle is going to have a big advantage. And oh. that's what the Terps did last week to Texas. Turnovers and penalties, both not in Maryland's favor at this point. Falcons try to take advantage. They run on first down, and Andrew Clare gets nothing. You know, I like that they're staying with Claire right there, though. You've got to continue to have the threat of the run. We see Brian Byron Cowart there, the big defensive end, coming down and making a play. But you have to keep him honest. If not, Maryland will just pin their ears back. They'll be able to pressure Daigie a lot, and it won't be an advantageous situation. Keep the run going with Claire. He's athletic. He'll be able to bounce one, break one every now and then, and that'll help give you some consistency. From the Terps, 49, Daigie under some pressure. Deep ball, far sideline, overthrown. Trying to get Scott Miller there on a little runaway route. Coming from the, Scott, the slot, it's a little bit wide. He had a step, and Daigie just overthrew him a little bit. Bobby, do you agree with the decision by Matt Canada to change quarterbacks? Well, he said he wanted to get both guys on the field. They both deserve to play. He said he needed to play both quarterbacks. That's when they're at their best. He did it some last week. He was going to do it again tonight. And when it works, it's a great idea. When it doesn't work, then people ask why you're doing it. Third down and ten. Falcons try to take advantage. Daigie under pressure. Down he goes. Nobody open downfield. And the Terps step up and deliver on third and long. Number 22, Isaiah Davis. The middle linebacker coming up with some pressure to make the play there. And to me, that's more of a coverage sack. Good you had time. You can see a pump in the football here. Scanning, scanning, scanning. No one was open. And it was just a matter of time before Isaiah Davis was able to beat Drew St. Clair. So the turnover doesn't hurt Maryland at all. They're going to get the football back. And a short punt. And it's going to bounce inside the 25 to about the Maryland 23-yard line. Not the great flip of field you're hoping for for Bowling Green to be able to pin them deep. Maryland, you have to feel pretty good after that situation coming away. No points, three and out. You've got the ball now on your own 22, 23-yard line. It's time for this Maryland offense to get something rolling a little bit. And we'll see who their quarterback is on the field. It looks like they're going back to number 11, Kaysom Hill. The passing of Jordan McNair continues to weigh heavy on the hearts of Maryland football fans. This is the shot in the Terps locker room here at BG today. Not forgotten as the uh, Terps try to honor his memory and give a good show here against Bowling Green and flags thrown before the snap. False start. False start, another procedure penalty on Maryland. We talked about trying to stay focused, eliminate some of those pre-snap mental errors. You begin to see a little bit more of that. And that is what's keeping Bowling Green in this game, allowing them to hang around defensively because you bail them out, give them long chains. 15 is a heck of a lot harder to achieve than it is a first and 10. Seven penalties and one turnover. Now they're going to run and get stacked up. Maybe back to the original line of scrimmage. And a nice, tough, physical run right there. Pick up six yards. I feel like you're in a pretty good situation based upon what happened. Now you're going to have to start putting a little bit more on Kaysom Hill, or maybe they feel like this Terrapin offensive line is beginning to impose their will. Second and, and got to have it. Get back on track situation. I wouldn't think, I would think they could run the football here as well. Second and nine from the 24, another oh. whistle. Time out. I think we got a timeout taken by Bowling Green. 
Yes, so Mike Jinks will bring his team to the sidelines. We'll break as well here at Doit Perry Stadium. A home lead for Bowling Green, 7-0 up on Maryland. Can you feel it? Astros Red Sox tomorrow at 8 on ESPN. Monday Night Football is back. Kicking off the season with a huge doubleheader. Jets Lions at 7-10, then Rams Raiders at 10-15. Monday on ESPN. We really like having Aaron around, but we're concerned he takes his name a bit too literally. Okay. He has to do golf again. Like All rise. The college football playoff is coming, and this season, everything matters. Your game face, his khakis, their bling, your black tie, where you sit, where he sits, the height of the grass, the signs you make, or what this lady eats for breakfast. Because the college football playoff is coming, and everything you do matters. No pressure. ESPN is giving fans with the best excuses for ditching work free tickets to a day game. And there's nobody here with me. I'm alone. So this is a tape ball that Kobe Bryant ripped off his ankle and threw into a trash can at Boston Garden. Very prized possession for me. Um, I got a Hall of Famer's ankle tape. His new show is called Detail. It's on ESPN+. Plus. You know, a lot of people think because uh, I'm a Celtics fan that I wouldn't watch, but there's nothing more fun for me than watching Kobe Bryant break down a Celtics win in great detail. I love it. The U.S. Open on the ESPN app. Stream first ball to last ball. Download the ESPN app today. The U.S. Open Men's Championship tomorrow at 4 on ESPN. Well, if you're a Terps fan and you're just coming into this game, you're kind of wondering, well, what's been going on here? Well, the Terps have run the football very well, but the abundance of penalties and their rushing game's been good, but really not a whole lot else so far. Third, second down and nine from the 24. They'll run and they'll get a first down out to about the 35. The Terps pounding it in the middle again for success and they move the chains you see maryland under center there something they haven't done a lot of usually sitting in the shotgun a little bit of motion coming straight downhill that allows lorenzo harrison to get that speed attacking the line of scrimmage nice open hole by that offensive line picking up nine plus yards in a first down terps out to their own 35. On the ground, and a little bit of yardage after the first contact by Lorenzo Harrison. Great job by Lorenzo Harrison, keeping his legs moving. And you see the shift, you see the motion afterwards, trying to continue to confuse this Bowling Green defense. And this is a critical drive for both sides. Maryland, you want to try to put some points on the board going into halftime. This has been one of your more consistent drives, second five, and if you're Bowling Green, You've been doing a great job this first half. If you can get out of here with a 7-0 lead to halftime, you're going to feel pretty good about how everything's gone. Five yards on the Harrison run makes it second and five. Shifts, motions, unbalanced. See it all from Matt Canada. They run. They run far side. This is Harrison again. First down and then some into BG territory. So Lorenzo Harrison is a, someone that wanted to get, Matt Cater wanted to get more involved last, this week. Last week, he only had a couple of, couple of rushes. You see him over here. Great push on the left side of this offensive line. Able to get the perimeter. Jonah Harper couldn't hold, the, hold down that side. And a big game now for that Maryland rushing attack. 14 yards on the ground. Sideline warning against Bowling Green. Trying to get the reset in the play clock here. Case of Hills lobbying for it. 
He's getting it. And that's something when you run a lot of shifts and motions, you need a full 25 seconds. It's important to get the play in quick. Hill hands off, and this is Harrison. Maybe to about the 40. And it looks like this Maryland offense has found something with Casey Hill under center. Everybody now is in shotgun. That's the invoke thing to do. It's tough to run a little bit of that power running game. But you might be seeing a little bit of Matt Canada's Wisconsin roots come out in them. They're not about getting in the shotgun at Wisconsin. They would have run the football downhill with a couple of tight ends. And that's what Maryland's doing on this offensive drive. Maryland staying on the ground and doing a good job second and five now they run the other way and get a little bit on the edge inside the 40. And there you see Matt Canada he's been all over the place this is a guy who's been a coordinator Butler Northern Illinois Indiana back to Northern Illinois Wisconsin NC State Pittsburgh LSU and then finally here the last 20 years he's been all over used to run up tempo when he got to Wisconsin that stopped and he said he could get the same things done with the shift in motions. And that's what you see his philosophy evolve to now with the Terrapins. The Falcons hoping their defense can stop them. Third down and just two. They'll run and they'll get a first down and then some. Great run. They break out of the tackles. And this is Fleet Davis stopped finally. Boy, he had a great move to stop. The tackler and gets in the red zone all the way down to the eight yard line. The great job here by Fleet Davis getting downhill, finding a little bit of a seam, breaking tackles, using that big physical 226 pound body to get inside the 10 yard line. Under center again. Maryland has found something now with these tight formations, just trying to pound Bowling Green off the line of scrimmage. Terps in the red zone. Down to about the six as they go back to Fleet Davis. A little trap inside, running opposite of the motion. Looked like it was almost the exact play with the big pickup on third down just prior. Fleet Davis is lobbying. He wants the ball inside the inside the five. He thinks he can hammer this in. He had seven carries for 31 yards last week. They're going to run. They're going to get the edge. They're going to score the touchdown by Lorenzo Harrison. And that's what all the shifts and motions do. They've been running that fly motion across time after time after time, continuing to fake it, never handing it off. You pound it inside, pound it inside, and all of a sudden, you slip it right out the back door to Lorenzo Harrison, able to turn the corner and pick up the first Terrapin touchdown. Five-yard run, and the Terps finally break through on the scoreboard. And Joseph Petrino hits the extra point to tie this football game at seven. Another look at Maryland. The last game has been their bread and butter so far today, Bobby. And this looks more like Wisconsin than you would think Maryland football. Right there, the jet sweep coming across. Nice smooth hand off to Harrison. Turns the corner, walks into the end zone. If you start looking at that, that drive consisted heavily of Kasim Hill, Kasim Hill under center. Not back in the shotgun, not slaying the ball around, looking a lot more like Wisconsin football than what you typically think of Maryland football. And, and Bobby, you talked about the mindset. Obviously, the emotions, the adrenaline, adrenaline last week for Maryland, much different last week than today. Now, after kind of a forgettable first half of football, the abundance of penalties, now they're starting to settle in, and we're going to see a little bit more about what they're really made of. I think Matt Canada realized, you know what, our guys, they're a little jittery. They're making some mistakes. We're doing a lot of things offensively. Let's just get under center. Let's try to knock them off the football and deliver, deliver a shot that way. They were able to do that up and down the field. I think they're going to stick with that game plan here in the second half. They're going to bring the football out. This is Hargrove on the return, stays up, and gets out to about the 35. 
Great return right there by Hargrove. Give your team a chance. There's 226 left on the clock. You've got a very talented quarterback. You've been throwing the ball pretty well. Now you have an opportunity with two timeouts to go down and get some points before half and retake the lead. Yeah, coming up at halftime, we'll take a look at how college football teams continue to add unique elements to their uniforms. A recap of the Ohio State scandal and, of course, our highlights from this first half of football. A game closer than we expected between BG and Maryland. Here's Daigie throwing screen complete. But the Terps are right there to put the hammer down on Andrew Clare. Well, coach defense, understand first play typically to start a two minute drive. Draws and screens. The Terps are ready for it. Not the way you want to start a two minute drive if you're Bowling Green. Letting this run down a little bit here. Smart move by Mike Jinks. Don't want to give Maryland the ball back with too much time if you don't get a first down in this series. Second and 13, they're gonna try and run. I gotta think at this point of the game, at this point of the half, Bobby, we're not, we're not gonna see a very adventurous play calling from uh, Bowling Green, are we? No, right here you just saw Maryland call a timeout. Bowling Green after a loss on first down just wanted to try to get out of the half and I don't necessarily blame Mike Jinks. I think that's the smart play with what you've done in the first half. Going with the tied ball game. Don't make the mistake, don't try to force it in, get a strip sack, a fumble, an interception, and give the Terrapins a short field. Well, Kasim Hill is the guy that's obviously been, uh, you know, the dominant quarterback for Maryland. We've seen his arm, that looks pretty good, and he's athletic as well. However, we did see Tyrell Pigram under center in this football game. Unfortunately, the third snap he took ended up in a fumble. But the Terps defense able to bail him out. Hold, hold the Falcons to no points on that drive. And so the ball was a turnover. Gave away some great field position. Not the end of the world. Able to escape. I'm curious to see what Mike Jinks' philosophy is going to be. They're going to throw it right now and try to pick up the first down. Deep throw, Dave. They got it. First down get for the Falcons. And now you're going to see Tempo up on the ball. They're moving. They're moving. They want to pick up that first, first down. The Turks sitting in the zone right there. Pudavong did a great job hooking up and an accurate ball by Dave. Pudavong on the catch. Falcons keep the football inside a minute 30. And we're going to bring this play back. Flags thrown. Twelve men on the field. Maryland. And that's where you get a little bit of tempo. Terps get caught in a substitution situation. Now you're giving them a free five yard. Bowling Green, Bowling Green only about 30 yards. Now out of good field goal range. And again, the key stat for Maryland so far, eight first half penalties. Well, still about a minute and a half left. Could maybe get to double digits if they try. Hey, we like Matt Canada. Here's the run and a first down maybe for Bowling Green right. and a late flag. I think it's going to be a face mask. And Andrew, a great... Andrew Clare on the run. You were kidding about double digit <laughs> penalties, weren't you? And there it is, the face mask. At 15 yards on a five-yard run by the Falcons. And you can see right here, number 50, Amibi Tani getting his hand out there trying to make a play. And that 15 yards on top of five, 20-yard gain for the Falcon. They're almost in field goal range right now. With Jared Dagey probably thinking end zone. Just a minute ago, Matt Canada was thinking, I want to get the ball back. Now he's just thinking, I want to get my guys off the field. That's what one first down can do for you. Mike Jinks played it well, bled the clock down a little bit, wanted to make sure if they didn't get it, they'd limit that Maryland offense. But now his offense is rolling, and they're rolling with tempo. From the Maryland 29. Looks like this one might be on the Falcons. Maybe a timeout. Timeout. Which side? Bowling Green. Bowling Green takes the timeout. 
What's the thinking on the timeout here, Bobby? I think the play clock was winding okay. down. Jared Deggy trying to get it out and was upset. I didn't see that specifically, but I'm pretty sure they called that to save the five yards. And now they have one timeout remaining, but there's a minute 21 left in college football with the stoppages on first down and the way it works. They're on the inside the 30. There's plenty of time right now. A minute 21 is an eternity. As you can see, the play clock winding down four seconds, three, two. Mike Jinks didn't want to be in a situation. I think they would have gotten it off. It's typically zero. Then the official looks down to see if the ball has been snapped. So you have a little leeway there, but Mike Jinks didn't want to take the chance. First and ten. Bowling Green trying to get the lead back here against Maryland. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Oh. Why not? Time out, Maryland. One good deed deserves another. <laughs> well, for a while, we enjoyed the pace of this first half. Oh, we were cruising. Some not, nice drives. Now, not, now, not so much. Well, I don't blame either coach right now. You don't want to concede a yard here before the half. Bowling Green trying to put some more points, retake the lead. Maryland wants to make sure that they're not going to be in a situation because between the 20 and the 30 That's an opportunity to take a strike as we take a look at the Mac Football preseason coaches poll Ohio and Northern Illinois Are the prohibitive favorites actually the Huskies not so much only one point between them and Toledo the Bobcats looking for their first MAC title in 51 years. Have gotten close a couple of times under Frank Solich, looking to bust down the door. Daigie under pressure, stays on his feet, throws, oh. wide open, caught. Touchdown, Bowling Green. Quinton Morris, wide open, the busted play, and the Falcons go up six. And I'm not even really sure what to say, but oh my. Jared Daigie, not known for his running ability, able to slide through right there. Find some daylight, about to turn it up. But a savvy veteran player, as only a sophomore, you can see him curling up, moving. It keeps his eyes down the field and sees Quentin Morris wide open. What a great play by the sophomore. 29 yards on the broken play. More Daigie scrambling, finding Morris. And Bowling Green. Thought they were going to have to get rid of the football. They kept it, and now they have cashed in with a go-ahead score. Just another look here at Jared Daigie sliding in the pocket. And a great job by the Falcon offensive line, giving him time to fight. What a good job keeping his eyes down the field. He is one of the, one of the most veteran quarterbacks you're going to see as a sophomore. It's because he grew up in the system. He played in his high school. His brother is the wide receivers coach here. They brought it over from Texas Tech. He knows what to do. He's confident. He's poised. And you saw that all in one play. I don't think anybody in that Maryland sideline was looking forward to Matt Canada's halftime speech. Mm. And they're even looking forward to it less now being down seven. And this is the difficulty of being in a situation where you're dealing with the emotions each and every week of Jordan McNair and how do you handle this trying to come down do you have a very quick, crisp week of practice after beating Texas probably not what they wanted and you know it's a week later after the honoring but you still have the locker up and trying to deal with all that these are these are young kids they're young men they're 18 to 22 you know this is a big experience the loss of a teammate a head coach on administrative leave trying to figure out everything that's going to happen and it's very, very difficult to handle. Matt Canada did a great job with it last week. It can be a little bit tougher now going on the road into an environment where you expect to win. Maybe you don't prepare quite as hard. Maybe not quite as focused as a player because you think you're going to beat this Falcon team. They're not confusing them with Texas, but right now they're in a battle. Yeah, we can't say it enough. Maryland's Achilles heel, nine penalties for 75 yards in this first half of football. A lot of those penalties have been drive killers on offense and on defense have kept drives alive. Short kick. And they let it hit the turf and go out of bounds. And another flag thrown. 
So that's going to be on the ball going out of bounds on the kickoff. They'll be able to get it, I think, at the 35-yard line. But I don't necessarily hate that. Kick it up there. Maryland didn't field it. That's a live football. If you saw Bowling Green honing in on that thing, if they were able to dive on it, it would have been Falcon football inside the 20. A chance to add to that seven-point lead. So the football moving up to the 35. And this is still plenty of time for the Terps to operate on offense. It is, but the way they've been running it, this hasn't been an offense that's been quick strike. Their, their last drive was their most successful under center pound in the football. Matt Canada, who's the motion magician, probably going to be a little more staggered now trying to run a two-minute offense. Kasim Hill under center, incomplete. Good coverage there. Trey Tavon Jacobs was the target. The Falcons were right there, second down. And they've got to watch here. If you go three and out without completing a pass, You'll be giving the ball back to a prolific Falcons offense against the tired turf defense with potentially a minute left. Bowling Green still has one timeout. So if they get the third down and just want to run it and think they're going to burn the clock, I don't know if Mike Jinx is going to let them off the hook. Hill's going to throw in the middle, caught. First down and a little bit more as Jay Sean Jones was the hero last week. Three touchdowns for the Terps. He's been quiet in this first half, though. The Terps are in hurry up and go mode on offense. Three touchdowns, three different ways. Now, now they run and they stay with Ty Johnson and they put the ball to the 45. Clock ticking, 45 seconds left. Important that wasn't a first down right there. It keeps the clock moving if you're Bowling Green. Maryland with only one timeout, so they're gonna have to hold it in case of a sack. Hill's gonna hand off, and the Terps run into that line with Ty Johnson. First, first down will briefly stop the clock here. Bowling Green able to get reset on defense. Maryland able to get another play in, but that clock is moving. They better get this offense going, Matt Canada. They're at the 39-yard line, 21 seconds left. Hill's going to go for the end zone, near side, incomplete. No contact. Oh, a late flag Ooh. thrown. Oh, boy. I was going to say no contact, but Maryland might have this penalty come their way, which would be a great thing for the Terps. I don't know about this. It looks like it's going to be pass interference. Wow. That's on number six, Montre Gregory. Going to give him a first down plus the 15 yards. They've been letting these defensive backs and receivers play a little bit. I don't think I saw anything that was that egregious as to ruin a flag in that situation. Two guys running stride by stride, jostling for the football a little bit on a ball that's well overthrown. Montre Gregory. Well. Ball is spotted inside the 25 at the 23-yard line. Going back to the motion. Oh, no. And they'll blow this play down. We saw Jayshon Jones with his first catch in this football game last week. What a special game for this young man. You see him on the jet sweep, get the ball, turn the corner, find pay dirt on the ground. Then you see him through the air, running the post on a nice delivery right there with the catch and run all the way in the end zone. And then the jet sweep again, pulls up, looking long, and finding the end zone through the air. Great job by Jayshon Jones. 121 total yards, three TDs, three different ways. And with the departure of DJ Moore last year, one of the best receivers in the Big Ten, now with the Carolina Panthers, looking to replace that production, and Jay Sean Jones has his eyes set on it. Yeah, we gotta think he's gonna get some more touches as this uh, first half ends and second half begins. Pressure. Turf. Terps trying to get some points here. They're going to throw near corner, incomplete. No flag that time. And that's a, that's my problem. I don't know if I could tell you a difference in the coverage right there exactly. between that play and the pass interference. Two guys running step by step, stride for stride. Yeah, there's going to be a little bit of arm battling. Ball's a little bit overthrown. To me, if you're going to call them, you got to call them all. 
11 seconds left. Terps have to be careful that they don't use it all right here on this play. He saves a timeout, but you don't want to take a sack. They go back, same spot, almost caught. They don't throw the flag. Three times in a row going to Montre Gregory. Got the P.I. of first, overthrown on the second, slightly overthrown on the third. Six seconds left. That can't have been on the field goal team, but just a little bit of arm battling right there. To me, that's fine. Unless you want to call it tight, you have to call it tight the entire game. But they've been letting guys play on both sides. So this is Joseph Petrino coming on for what should be a 40-yard field goal last week, a 33-yard make against Texas. Kick is up. It is good. And the Terps able to salvage points with three seconds left, point three seconds left here against Bowling Green. So for a game that didn't have much scoring through the first quarter or even most of the second, I think three consecutive drives almost, we're seeing points back and forth by both the Falcons and the Terps. And that was a big drive by both teams. They were pulling in the end zone for the Falcons and a great job for the Terps going from a run first offense, a drive ago, going to something where they're gonna put the ball in the air a little bit, test the Falcons down the field, and then ultimately come up with a field goal. This is not the game that most Maryland fans thought they would be enjoying on this Saturday evening. After watching last week, Dan, this isn't the game that I thought that I would see. I didn't think that Maryland would come out and play as poorly as they have from an execution standpoint in the first half. And I didn't know that Bowling Green, I, I knew about Claire, you knew about Miller, I knew what Daigie could do, but I didn't think they'd be able to out-execute Maryland early in the game. Squid kick and that is going to end our first half of football. And Maryland goes to the locker room. Way too many penalties. And Bowling Green feeding off their home crowd. It's a 14-10 lead for the Falcons here at Doit Perry Stadium. Our halftime when we come back to Bowling Green. It's the Falcons trying to spring an upset at home on a Big Ten team. They lead the Terps of Maryland 14 to 10. ESPN is giving fans with the best excuses for ditching work free tickets to a day game. And there's nobody here with me. I'm alone. Monday Night Football is back. Kicking off the season with a huge doubleheader. Jets Lions at 7-10, then Rams Raiders at 10-15. Monday on ESPN. This is what the postseason feels like. Two Goliaths squaring up. Can you feel it? Masters Red Sox, tomorrow at 8 on ESPN. The U.S. Open Men's Championship, tomorrow at 4 on ESPN. The U.S. Open on the ESPN app. Stream first ball to last ball. Download the ESPN app today. The college football playoff is coming. And when it comes to who's in, everything you do matters. No pressure. We really like having Aaron around, but we're concerned he takes his name a bit too literally. Oh. Okay. He has to do golf again. Like All rise. Staying ahead isn't about waiting for a chance. It's about the one bold choice you make that moves you forward. The one and only Cadillac Escalade. show up for just anybody so don't be just anybody 
be limp worthy. Goodyear, more driven. One cup of lemonade. It's time to pack up, kids. NFL Sunday Ticket. Get every live game every Sunday at no extra charge when you switch to Direct TV. More for your thing. That's our thing. This season, keep your stories interessante, like Dos Equis, the beer behind the head ball coach's original nickname, the Head Beer Coach. Great game, Head Beer Coach. Head hey, Beer Coach. That's my name. It's Dos Equis time. Dos Equis, keep it interessante. Love this uniform. This is totally thumbs up. First is Oregon, the OGs of dope uniforms. Trend setting changes the game. The fashion statement of college football. The most notable change this year, the massive numbers on the fronts and backs of the jerseys. Question is, how many different combinations will Oregon unveil this year? This is number one in counting. Earned, not given. That's the motto of the Virginia football program, and that phrase is stitched inside the collar of this orange jersey. The helmets are also unique with a rough surface representing the texture of uncut marble, the stone used to create the numerous columns found across UVA's historic grounds. Some pretty deep stuff with this combination. You all know this guy. And I'm so excited the Gators are joining Team Jordan Brand. Florida and Oklahoma will be joining Michigan and North Carolina in rocking Jordan brand uniforms on the gridiron this season. Jump man, jump man, jump man, them boys up to something, woo! Shout out to Drake and Future. Only 11 programs will wear the brand new Adidas Prime Knit A1 uniform this season, and here are two of them. Rutgers replaces the school's word mark with the block R on the chest of the jersey, and NC State's uniform features custom shoulder stripes to resemble claw marks. Next up is a first for Gear Up and all of football. Miami will debut a uniform featuring repurposed and upcycled materials. It's composed of over 70% regenerated yarn, a raw material transformed from fishing nets, and other nylon waste intercepted in marine environments. Who would have thought that a uniform could be so eco-friendly? Tony the Land Shark. The mascot is perfectly done by Ole Miss. The University of Mississippi has a new mascot named Landshark Tony, inspired by the team's Landshark defense. It's fitting that Ole Miss is giving Tony a proper welcome to the program with this great white shark look. That's right, all white everything, from the helmet to the cleats. From Miami to Ole Miss, we may need to consider an aquatic themed edition of Gear Up. season feels like two goliaths squaring up with their eyes on the same prize the biggest names in the game under the bright lights flexing championship muscle this is a glimpse into the future can you feel it sunday night baseball astros red Sox tomorrow at 8 on espn telecast presented by taco bell the u.s open men's championship tomorrow at 4 on ESPN. The college football playoff is coming. And from your game face to your game day rituals, everything you do matters. Yay! No pressure. Monday Night Football is back. Kicking off the season with a huge doubleheader. First, Sam Darnold debuts in Motown to take on Matt Stafford in the Lions. All three phases play together in one heartbeat. Let's go. Then, Todd Gurley looks to build on a dominant 2017 as the Rams invade the Black Hole to battle Derek Carr and the Raiders. I never thought I'd be back, but here I am and I'm ready to get to work. Monday Night Football, Jets-Lions, then Rams-Raiders. Monday on ESPN.
Hey, my name is Rick, but everyone calls me The Rick. What I'll do to just make myself get a little closer to the action while I'm watching the game on ESPN Plus, I like to smell the dirt from the ballpark where they're playing. This is Wrigley Field. The Camden Yards file broke. That's from that's from Yankee Stadium. <laughs> El Nino? Meat sweats? Aliens. That's the one, okay? And here a comment is no one because of the alien invasion. In unrelated news, ESPN is giving fans with the best excuses for ditching work free tickets to a day game. And there's nobody here with me. The U.S. Open on the ESPN app. Stream first ball to last ball. Download the ESPN app today. A special independent working group was formed to direct the investigation in Urban Meyer's handling of a domestic violence complaint. Urban Meyer is suspended through September 2nd, 2018, and for the games on September 1st, 8th, and 15th. The suspensions are tough, but I fully accept them. The investigation lasted two weeks and perhaps left us with more questions than answers about an iconic football coach. Investigators found that Urban Meyer did not condone domestic violence, nor did he enable an alleged abuser, and that he did not deliberately lie at Big Ten media days. But Meyer did allow his longest tenured Buckeyes assistant, Zach Smith, to run amok with a litany of problematic behavior that jeopardized a vaunted program and put Meyer's reputation in great peril. What message do you have for Courtney Smith? A message for everyone involved in this. I'm sorry that we're in this situation. And uh, I'm just sorry we're in this situation. I would have liked to have him acknowledge that there was a victim and to apologize to her uh, would have been really nice to hear. Nancy Nilon the executive director of the Ohio Domestic Violence Network says, the university missed a golden opportunity to take a stand against domestic violence and show what it really means to treat women with respect. I think that Urban doesn't understand what that means. I don't think he knows how to help his coaches understand what that means. And I mean, he is a mentor for young people and his coaches are a mentor for young people. It doesn't just happen by putting words on a wall. There's work involved to it. Twice, Meyer has tweeted apologies for his failures on the public stage, saying, I should have said on Wednesday, I sincerely apologize to Courtney Smith and her children for what they have gone through. My words and demeanor on Wednesday did not show how seriously I take relationship violence. And yet, investigators revealed that Meyer discussed erasing text messages on his phone as soon as he learned of new allegations against Zach Smith. The question remains, what has been learned here in Columbus? And what has been done to make sure nothing like this will happen again? Interim coach Ryan Day says that the words on this wall do resonate inside this program. I can't imagine there's one day that goes by where we don't talk about our core values. And one of them is the respect for women. With the uh, women's movements nowadays and everything, I think uh, three game suspension for them doesn't sound like serve enough justice. I feel like that's something important to talk about, especially when you're on a college campus, because that is something that is prevalent. Unfortunately, it is a culture here. So this is something that needs to be expressed more. The U.S. Open on the ESPN app. Stream first ball to last ball. Download the ESPN app today. The college football playoff is coming, and when it comes to who's in, everything you do matters. No pressure. Monday Night Football, Jets, Lions, then Rams, Raiders, Monday on ESPN. Can you feel it? Astros, Red Sox, tomorrow at 8 on ESPN. Hey, my name is Rick, but everyone calls me the Rick. What I'll do to just make myself get a little closer to the action while I'm watching the game on ESPN Plus, I like to smell the dirt 
from the ballpark where they're playing. This is Wrigley Field. The Camden Yards file broke. That's from that's from Yankee Stadium. <laughs> we really like having Aaron around, but we're concerned he takes his name a bit too literally. Okay. He has to do golf again. Like All rise. Tomorrow, resurgent two-time winner Novak Djokovic faces 2009 champ Juan Martín Del Potro. Past U.S. Open winners battle for championship glory. The Men's Championship, tomorrow at 4 on ESPN. The U.S. Open Men's Championship, tomorrow at 4 on ESPN. ESPN is giving fans with the best excuses for ditching work free tickets to a day game. And there's nobody here with me. I'm alone. El Nino? Meat sweats? Aliens. That's the one, okay? And here, a comment is no one because of the alien invasion. In unrelated news, ESPN is giving fans with the best excuses for ditching work free tickets to a day game. And there's nobody here with me. One cup of lemonade. Time to pack up, kids. NFL Sunday ticket. Get every live game every Sunday at no extra charge when you switch to Direct TV. More for your thing. That's our thing. Well, the weather's not perfect. The football has not been perfect either. But these two teams have a winnable game within reach. 14-10 is the halftime lead with Bowling Green over Maryland. We'll have our first half highlights and stats when we come back to Doit Perry. Hey, my name is Rick, but everyone calls me The Rick. What I'll do to just make myself get a little closer to the action while I'm watching the game on ESPN+. Plus. I like to smell the dirt from the ballpark where they're playing. This is Wrigley Field. The Camden Yards file broke. That's from, that's from Yankee Stadium. <laughs> so toot toot is kind of like, I should say, toot toot. That's when somebody's just feeling good about themselves, usually me. I never had a four game losing streak in eight years. Oh my God, talk more about yourself. Two, two. Trying to find that wide receiver. The next, I say Randy Moss. Uh, that should probably be a two, two and some push ups. I never get any props. Ricks. Two, two. Monday Night Football is back. Kicking off the season with a huge double header. First, Sam Darnold debuts in Motown to take on Matt Stafford in the Lions. All three phases play together. One heartbeat. Let's go. Then, Todd Gurley looks to build on a dominant 2017 as the Rams invade the Black Hole to battle Derek Carr and the Raiders. I never thought I'd be back, but here I am and I'm ready to get to work. Monday Night Football, Jets, Lions, then Rams, Raiders. Monday on ESPN. This is what the postseason feels like. Two Goliaths squaring up. Can you feel it? Astros Red Sox, tomorrow at 8 on ESPN. The college football playoff is coming. And when it comes to who's in, everything you do matters. No pressure.
Welcome, guys. Hi. You are going to love the neighborhood. It's totally wired for Fios. Is that a good thing? Good. Fiber optics can move crazy amounts of data at even crazier speeds, and Fios is a 100% fiber optic network, so you can stream, game, and watch 4K shows all at once. It's right about that. See? We are going to have so much fun here. 100% fiber optic network. 100% phenomenal. Get the fastest speeds available for the best price with the Fios Gigabit Connection. Well, the weather is not exactly picturesque. The football, eh, not picturesque either, but uh, we're going to play a second half of football. And again, it's uh, an up for grabs game here between Maryland and Bowling Green. Welcome back inside Doit Perry Stadium. Dan Gatowski with Bobby Carpenter. And, uh, well, Bobby, this was a game that it seemed like was there for the taking for Maryland, but the Terps just never really could get on track in that first half, could they? We saw Maryland come out and pound the football, initially be able to impose their will at the offensive line, but it was the penalties, nine penalties in the first half to set back that Terp offense and defense, and then it was Bowling Green that was able to get it going. Now, the Falcons offense, led by Dave the quarterback, he was comfortable at the first play, a sack, but since then, he's been pretty sharp. You see him finding Morris there on the end cut, hanging in, finding Pudibon on the outside with the big time NFL throw, then the play action, the touchdown to Scott Miller. And here you see his feet avoiding the rush, keeping the eyes downfield for the big touchdown there to break the game open. Maryland on the ground. That was where their offense really seemed to be in good flow today. And you saw Matt Canada uses the shifts, the motions, able to get Ty Johnson going. Big running back downhill and pose his will, will on this Falcon defense doing a great job there. Lorenzo Harrison doing a good job. And then it was Fleet Davis using the, that sweet feet, getting them all the way down inside the 10 yard line. And then it's Lorenzo Harrison finishing it off with the jet sweep around the side. BG with the late first half touchdown as we roll into our stats. And there is one stat that will just jump out to Maryland fans and drive them crazy. Penalties, nine for 79 yards. And the rushing yardage way one-sided in favor of the Turks. Almost 200 yards on the ground for the Turks. Matt Cannon has to be happy about that. They hopped under center with Kasim Hill. You saw a little bit of taste of Wisconsin when he was back there as the offensive coordinator. Not your typical Maryland offense, but there's nine penalties, like you mentioned, Dan. Almost 80 yards. Those are drive killers. So there's our look back at the first half, and now we commence with our third quarter of football. The Falcons on offense. And this crowd has been rewarded for their patience. Kick out of bounds. Kicking team number 27. Ball replaced at the 35 yard line. First down and 10. Weather hasn't been all that good. It's been comfortably cool. The rain has kind of come in and out, but nothing so heavy, Bobby, is to really impede what these offenses really want to do. It's been a great night for football, Dan. It's cool. There's a little bit of a breeze, some slight precipitation, nothing to really affect it, but. You know, it seemed fitting that you would see Maryland come up, kick the ball out of bounds, and start the second half the same way they started the first, with another penalty. <laughs> they move to the 35. Matt Canada is finding that uh, playing on the road is a little bit different than playing at home. Five-yard penalty, first down. Well, at least Matt Cannon can get breathe a sigh of relief. He sees those flags come out. They've been on his team the entire first half. Bowling Green returning the favor now, starting at first and 15 on their own 30-yard line. When you're flinching every time a flag is thrown, that's usually a bad thing for a coach. So Jarrett Dagey, solid numbers in the first half he'll throw on first down lots of time and he'll throw underneath complete to andrew claire claire stays up but takes some pun punishment for it gets about five yards to the 30 yard line well actually i, th I think they're about at the 30 right there after the penalty that was almost that was basically a no game a lot of work not a lot of reward for it but jared daggy had tons of time great coverage down the field by that maryland secondary 
So it brings up second down in uh, 15. And they run. They don't get much. Clear. This is clear again. Maryland. Important for them to make a statement early here in this second half. They rallied under some adverse conditions last week against Texas. How about some keys for the Terps in this second half, Bobby? Second half, it's going to be number one to eliminate the penalties. You're facing a third and 15. Don't bail out the Falcons with the penalty. They want to keep running the football, control the clock, and then they need to find a way to control Jared Dagey on third down. He's been very accurate. He's done a great job of finding receivers late in the play. Third and long for BG. Dagey's going to pump and turn back the other way. Two flags go down. Pass incomplete. Probably a penalty against the Falcons. Looks to be a holding, but there's also a flag in the secondary defensive holding. Most likely offsetting. Probably played this one all over again. There are two fouls on the team. Two fouls on the play, correction. One against each team. Holding on the defense. Holding on the offense. Penalties offset. Replay. Third down. And that was a nice bail out there. As you can see, the holding. Defensively, Scott Miller working the slot, almost getting tackled. <laughs> and I can see why he's calling for the flag. It makes perfect sense. And then you see some holding right here. The right tackle, 64, with a similar takedown. And here's the difference. The defensive holding, that's an automatic first down. This is like a penalty palooza. We're going to have another one on Maryland. Uh, Jared Daggy's doing his best. Aaron Rodgers trying to draw, draw him off sides to get the quick, Offside, quick play. Uh, defense number six. Five-yard penalty. Third down. He had Quentin Morris right there trying to run the takeoff. Maybe a free play, maybe pass interference down the field. But now Bowling Green back to a more manageable third and ten. Third and ten. Diggy's going to change the play call. In two high safeties. Wouldn't be surprised to see Scott Miller get some work in the slot. Maryland come with the pressure or drops into coverage. Daggy throwing far sideline, incomplete. Maryland had that covered very well in the secondary. That was Rayvon Davis. You see Scott Miller working there in the slot. Rayvon Davis doing a great job. The nickelback running underneath there, making a very difficult throw for Jared Deggie. BG now has failed in their last three third down attempts, and they're going to punt fourth and ten from their own 35. Punt is going to go out of bounds, and it's going to be Terps football right at about the 30-yard line so so much for penalties becoming a non-factor in our second half my goodness we started off penalties on both sides a couple of them each way it makes for a long game it's something the coaches cannot be happy but the one thing in college football people forget about there is no preseason there are no scrimmages so the only work you're getting done is in practice they try to have officials there but as much as you try to replicate that game environment it's just not the same and even though you think you worked the bugs out week one sometimes there's still a few left another shift by matt canada terps football they have never led in this football game there's the good run on first down what a big push too after the contact they go back to Anthony McFarland and get big numbers out of him and move the chains right near the 50-yard line. See the shift. Now you're seeing a motion, and now you're seeing the offensive line getting a great push there. Unbelievable job. Left guard Sean Christie doing a great work there up front, helping to, helping to really open that hole for McFarland. 16 yards on that run for Maryland. They'll go back on the ground. This is Lorenzo Harrison spinning out of trouble. Can't stretch it out the other way. Four set of bounds for a big loss. That was a great job there by number 14, Marcus Milton. And we see a penalty flag flying up on Maryland's sideline. This is probably going to be a sideline warning or some form of personal foul. Dead ball. 
Matt Cannon is not going to be happy because that's probably language of an official. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense number nine, 15 yard penalty, second down. That's number nine, first unsportsmanlike conduct of the ball game. That's Jarvis Davenport. I don't even know if he's on the field. He's over there yelling and, and chatting back at Stevens, throwing him the ball. And that's not a great situation to be in. We talked about the penalties, Dan. The first half, it's killing him. Now we're facing a first, and I'm not sure what you would even call this. First and 20, 30. I'm not that great at math to be able to add this all up. Second and 33. Ooh. And the run, still going. Oh, good tackle, though. Good carry for Maryland, but they got a whole bunch of yardage to make up. Ball out to the 34-yard line. And they're trying to get back on track, take a chunk back of this. Dopey set it up, and that's a nice run right there by number five, Anthony McFarland. Getting the seam, Jerry McBride overrunning it, but Brandon Harris, the backside linebacker, coming across, making a nice physical tackle. Third, so, yeah. third and 22 right here. I think Maryland's just trying to take some of these yards back to help set up their punt in a little better situation. Pressure on Hill. He'll throw on the run incomplete. Not sure if he would have stayed in bounds anyway. Been well short of the first down. Still facing a fourth and ten, but I'm impressed with this Falcon defensive line. Running a blitz up front, drawing some pressure. Number 93, Kyle Jr. chasing down Kasim Hill, applying the heat. Falcon defense getting off the field. So Wade Lee's on the punt. <laughs> and he gets off a very good punt. And it's going to take a Maryland bounce. And he caught it and then got clobbered. At about the 23 yard line, a risky grab, but no damage done by Morris or by Marcus Milton for Bowling Green. A break here at Doit Perry, a 14 10 lead for the Falcons. The ESPN app now with ESPN Plus. Get more ESPN and download now. Don't make a first impression or lasting impression without it. Don't turn your house into a home without it. Don't go live or even share a moment without it. And don't watch her dance like nobody's watching without it. Whatever you do, don't forget that the more you live forward, the more you need someone at your back. The powerful backing of American Express. Don't live life without it. The college football playoff is coming. And this season, everything matters. Your game face. His khakis, their bling, your black tie, where you sit, where he sits, the height of the grass, the signs you make, or what this lady eats for breakfast. Because the college football playoff is coming, and everything you do matters. No pressure. Monday Night Football is back. Kicking off the season with a huge doubleheader. First, Sam Darnold debuts in Motown to take on Matt Stafford in the Lions. All three phases play together at one heartbeat. Let's go. Then, Todd Gurley looks to build on a dominant 2017 as the Rams invade the black hole to battle Derek Carr and the Raiders. I never thought I'd be back, but here I am and I'm ready to get to work. Monday Night Football, Jets, Lions, then Rams, Raiders. Monday on ESPN. We really like having Aaron around, but... We're concerned he takes his name a bit too literally. Oh. Okay. He has to do golf again. Like All rise. Tomorrow, resurgent two-time winner Novak Djokovic faces 2009 champ Juan Martín del Potro. Past U.S. Open winners battle for championship glory. The men's championship tomorrow at 4 on ESPN.
Let's take a look at the MAC scoreboard on this Saturday. The big surprise, actually really not a surprise, but the big win went to Eastern Michigan. They hit a game-ending field goal to beat the Boilermakers in Purdue. And Ball State shows up well at Notre Dame. Handoff on first down. Falcons working it on the ground and get to maybe the 23-yard line. To me, the biggest surprise, you mentioned that Ball State, 16-24. Talking about a one-score football game right there, late in the game. Ball State had also missed a field goal 45 yards, and it could have been even tighter than that for a Notre Dame team coming off an emotional victory at home against Michigan. Didn't really respond all that well today. I'm sure Brian Kelly not happy about how this team fared. Still second down and 10. Scott Miller motion, trying to get him up the rail. Daggy under throwing. He had an open receiver. Bryson Denley, the running back, Texas Tech commit trying to get in the flat and putting Scott Miller in motion. That's something that's not typical of this air raid offense. They don't like to motion. They get their guys set. They're typically in the same positions all the time. You see Daggy stepping up though, gets hit on the arm. That's the reason for the air pass. Because he had Denny, he had Denny underneath. Third and long for Bowling Green's Falcons. And they run on the ground, and this is a good run. Maybe a first down pickup for Andrew Blair. He is right there at the 33-yard line. And the, the field judge is motioning the sticks on, so they're giving him the first down. Great job by Andrew Clare. Right at the end there, doing a good job on Darnell Savage. The spin move, diving forward to get a first down. And that's one thing Mike Jinks, he talked about it a lot last year. He loves the runs on third and long. Thinks you're going to see a light box. Players all playing play pass. And maybe sometimes you can slip in there and pick one up. And they did just that. Falcons keep the football. They had never trailed in this football game. High snap on the ground again. This time, nothing there. Mike Jinks still staying with the run. It may not be picking up big yardage, but it's forcing Maryland to stay honest. Had Dorian Hendricks in there, their backup H back, trying to punch a little bit of a hole in the defense. That Maryland D line just too big at this point, too physical up front. But that's allowing them to forcing them to play the run giving that BG offensive line a little bit of relief so they can protect Daigie a little better in the pass. Daigie's going to throw on second and ten. Oh, and he goes down. A big hit. And he lost his helmet, too. Well, was, Daigie did lose his helmet. That's his second sack that he's taken today. It's a great job off the edge. And he stepped right into it. He's got pretty good awareness in the pocket, but when you're beat that cleanly without a rush, tough to step up. His helmet came off, so now we're seeing number 13, Grant Loy. He got some action last year when Deggie went down. And credit Jesse Annabonum for that tackle. And so they have to make the quarterback switch as Grant Loy comes in under center. Third down and 19. Away game, offense, five-yard penalty, third down. And Jesse and Abonum not wearing his typical number six, wearing number five tonight. I know, Dan, you love it when the guys change jerseys from week to week. <laughs> third down and 24. They're going to run, and they're going to get nothing on that far side. Boy, Maryland's defense starting to heat things up here. Well, you get Daigie gets sacked, gets his helmet knocked off. He has to come out. You compound that within a delay of game by Grant Loy having to come in. You run the ball on third down, don't pick up any yards. And now you're facing a fourth and 20-plus. Not a great situation, but at least you didn't turn the football over. You're still leading in this game, and your defense has been playing pretty well. So you have to continue to just keep getting off the field and giving them opportunities. 
Here's the punt to Jacobs. He will not field it. And it's Maryland football. The Terps trying to rally on the road here at Bowling Green. The Falcons are up 14 to 10. The powerful backing of American Express. Don't live life without it. Monday Night Football is back. Kicking off the season with a huge doubleheader. First, Sam Darnold debuts in Motown to take on Matt Stafford in the Lions. All three phases play together at one heartbeat. Let's go. Then, Todd Gurley looks to build on a dominant 2017 as the Rams invade the black hole to battle Derek Carr and the Raiders. I never thought I'd be back, but here I am and I'm ready to get to work. Monday Night Football, Jets-Lions, then Rams-Raiders. Monday on ESPN. We really like having Aaron around, but we're concerned he takes his name a bit too literally. Okay. He has to do golf again. Like All rise. Hashtag Ask Got Mondays, baby. Hashtag Ask Got Monday. <laughs> Charles was here. That's Charles would do it like this. I'm making an ask. <laughs> The college football playoff is coming. And from your game face to your game day rituals, everything you do matters. Whoa! No pressure. This is what the postseason feels like. Two Goliaths squaring up with their eyes on the same prize. Can you feel it? Astros Red Sox, tomorrow at 8 on ESPN. I am the DQ $4 burger in Blizzard. I'm a mini Blizzard and a burger for just four bucks. Holy cheeseburgers, it comes with a Blizzard, is what people will say. Because I'm not fast food. I am fan food. Maryland's struggles tonight besides penalties. How about a lack of third down conversions, Bobby? You see Kasim Hill there. He's got pretty good time most of the time. Just hasn't been accurate with the football. Missing inside, missing outside, and then barely missing outside once again. This Maryland offense not great last year on third downs. Matt Canada comes in. They're worse in the Big Ten. Under 30% tonight. Doing only marginally better. Two of six, 33%. Terps football. You can see the numbers. They had a lot of emotion in their win over Texas last week. They're going to have to find some of that and get some road magic tonight here against BG. Long count. They'll run. And they've had good success running the football tonight. They'll go to the 40-yard line as they hand off and get Anthony McFarland back in the running game. To see Kasim Hill back under center again. Going back to what they had success with in the second quarter, putting together that nice long drive. I look to see that the rest of the game here, unless they're in a situation where they have to move the football quickly. It worked once with Bowling Green. I don't know if they have the horses up front to stop a physical downhill running game. Second down and six. Hill's going to roll and throw and caught one-handed grab by McFarland, who stays up and gets the chains moving for Maryland. And now when you're running the football with success under center, that gives you a little bit of this boot. Play action, get to see Hill moving, and a great one-handed catch right there by Anthony McFarland using the speed, turning it up and picking up the first down. First and ten, the Terps moving to their own 47. Staying under center, using some wings. They hand off, and oh, good open field tackle. Positive yardage for the Terps. And again, McFarland on the touch, but... Big tackle there by Fred Garth Jr., the fifth-year senior out of Mississippi, making the big play to limit what could have been even a bigger game. This Bowling Green defensive line getting worn down a little bit. Going to need a negative yardage play here to try to throw the Terps off track. They pick up four yards on the first down run. And an explosion run. They go to the 
quick hit on the far side, and it, they continue to mix it up. And that's the guy that did so much damage last week, Jay Sean Jones. The true freshman out of Fort Myers, Florida. Three touchdowns, three ways. One of them was on this jet sweep action right here. You see him turning it up. And just a shoestring tackle right there by Montre Gregory. Avoided what would have been a for sure touchdown. Ball at the 38. Maryland's got BG back on their heels. Looking for a go-ahead score. And they run, and he stays up. Here come the Terps inside the 10, down to the 5. Boy, he just kept on moving. Ty Johnson would not go down. And Maryland inside the 10, looking for a go-ahead score. Now you see a little bit of tempo from Maryland. One of the jet sweeps, probably trying to pound it in here now. Handoff. And running wide to the goal line is Ty Johnson. But, but the flags have been thrown already. And that is something the Matt Canada, if he had any hair left, would be pulling out. You have the big run, get all the way down inside the five. What will kill an offense more than anything is penalties in the red zone. Looking at the left guard, a little bit of a hip toss there by Sean Christie. That's a questionable call. When you're not getting the calls all night, probably not going to get them down there either. First and 16 now in a first and goal situation for Maryland. Touchdown puts him up. Field goal still leaves him down one. Bowling Green bringing some heat. Hill hands off to Johnson who stays up inside the 10 down to the 5. Carl Pointy had a great play call and another flag. I'm curious what this is going. Potentially a little post play activity on, Mar on Maryland. You know, Jeff Servinsky is our referee tonight. I, I can't believe that his batteries for his microphone on the field haven't worn out by now. After the play is over, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 73. 15 yard penalty, second down. That's number 73, first unsportsmanlike conduct penalty of the ball game. That's the center, Johnny Jordan. I, I'm not even really sure what to say. You have a great run. You're Johnny Jordan. You're the center. Blocking downfield here at the bottom left. And just pushing the guy at the back at the end of the play. I understand you're going to be physical. You want to set a tone. But you have to understand how many penalties you've had tonight. You're in the red zone. You're getting ready to score and take the lead. you got to ease off. I'm not sure, Mike Canada, if his blood pressure is not through the roof, because he's a pretty cool cat. I mean, he might have a heart attack on the sideline. From the 22, time for Hill. He's going to go to that far corner, dropped in the end zone. Oh, he had a great throw right on target, and they couldn't squeeze it. Tavon Jacobs. Good protection from Kaysom Hill. He's sitting back there in the pocket. Going the seven route to corner, trying to pin it. It's a little underthrown as he has to turn and wait, and that oh. gives just enough time to Jerry McBride, who didn't give up, gets the hand and rakes it down. And now a big third and goal from the 22 yard line. BG trying to force Maryland at least into a field goal hill. Time and the crossing route underneath is complete to Davenport, who stays up. Touchdown, Maryland. And that's what a missed tackle will do for you right there. You get the ball in a playmaker's hands running full speed. Davenport's able to hit the spin move right there at about the 15 yard line, turn it up, and an improbable touchdown for the Terrapin off offense. Casey Mill, Casey Mill throwing a nice one underneath. You see right there the spin move and just walking into the end zone. Hey, Maryland played on wet turf last week at FedEx Field, so it has not been consistent rain here in Bowling Green, but playing on the wet surface is something the Terps are fairly comfortable with. We've got an injured Bowling Green player. We'll ID him as soon as we get a clean look. And that's... Has Hassan Belton. Number 26, defensive back 
over there on the perimeter. Third and 22. Carl Pellini, if he has any of his brother's intensity in him, I'm not sure exactly how his head is still on his body. That'll drive a defensive coordinator crazy. Petrino on the extra point. And that's good. And the Terps take their first lead in this football game with four and a half minutes to go. 17-14, Maryland leading at Bowling Green. Powerful backing of American Express. Don't live life without it. Hey, my name is Rick, but everyone calls me The Rick. What I'll do to just make myself get a little closer to the action while I'm watching the game on ESPN Plus, I like to smell the dirt from the ballpark where they're playing. This is Wrigley Field. The Camden Yards file broke. That's from that's from Yankee Stadium. <laughs> the U.S. Open Men's Championship Tomorrow at 4 on ESPN Under these lights Everything is bigger The pageantry The playmaking The stakes Anything can happen On Saturday night This is what the postseason Feels like Two Goliaths squaring up with their eyes on the same prize. Can you feel it? Astros Red Sox, tomorrow at 8 on ESPN. We really like having Aaron around, but we're concerned he takes his name a bit too literally. Oh, okay. He has to do golf again. Like All rise. The college football playoff is coming, and when it comes to who's in, Everything you do matters. No pressure. Monday Night Football is back. Kicking off the season with a huge doubleheader. Jets Lions at 710, then Rams Raiders at 1015. Monday on ESPN. been an uphill battle from the get-go for the Maryland Terps and the rushing defense is what has held them in this game they have really stopped BG on the ground Bobby they've done a great job and you're talking about Drew Claire had over 100 yards last week against Oregon he's a talented back a lot of speed but Maryland has done a great job up front with their front three to really control that line of scrimmage kickoff return a little bit creative there for Ravian Hargrove. Let's take a look at this rush defense here. You see Maryland pushing the issue with the line of scrimmage, changing it. Nowhere for Claire to run. Red shirts everywhere. Not really being able to get much of a push. Holding him to 15 yards on the ground through two and a half, more than two and a half quarters. So Maryland struggled to stop Texas on the ground last week, but they have shored up very well against Bowling Green tonight. Jared Dagey under center, ball at the 21. Sorry, the 22. The throw is caught, complete to Quinton Morris. Great coverage, he still caught it. And to me, that's a great throw and a great catch, great coverage. Defensive back is draped all over Quinton Morris. He does a good job there. They could have gone P.I. on that play. I'm glad they didn't. Let's keep this consistent through the rest of the second half. Let these guys play. Second four. Diggy getting some direction from the sideline. Changing the back, seeing single high. Look for them to throw the football. Diggy, pump fake. Now he's in trouble. Down he goes. The ball is loose. They say he's down, though. And... They dropped the flag. I was curious to see if they were going to call it intentional grounding. Jared Diggy tried to escape the pocket, throw it back to the line of scrimmage underhand to avoid taking the sack. But now he's going to be in a worse situation. 
Intentional grounding. Offense number two. The ball be placed at the spot foul. Loss of down. Third down. Well, if Maryland, or sorry, if, Ball, if Bowling Green has learned anything from Maryland tonight, it's let's not make mistakes that take ourselves out of the game. And that's one that's now that uh, the Falcons have are see, trailing. You see, you see Claire right here, and this is the tackle box where he has to get out of. So he's throwing at Claire, and he's almost outside of that tackle box. That, to me, I don't think that's an accurate call. Ball also got deflected. Daigie throwing back. Smart play caught by Andrew Clare, who's still going and stopped at the 28. Just too much to overcome. That was a great play right there. Nice call by Mike Jinks being able to throw it back to Clare, get one of the best athletes out in space. But this Maryland Terrapins defense too fast. The, tor the Terps swarming and forcing now a fourth and four and a punt by the Falcons. Big series for Maryland defensively. They are now playing with their first lead in this football game. Tennerman on to punt. Oh, and he gets off a great punt. Ooh, and caught and instantly put down. So it's Terps football. Flag, of course. No, tell me Maryland was offsides. That'll really make Matt Cannon this day. <laughs> Give him a free first down. <laughs> Matt Cannon, he's concerned, and if I was him, I would be too. It's going to be a long week of practice, no matter what the outcome of this game is for the Terps. So we're coming to talk to Matt Canada. It looks like it's going to be on Bowling Green, because he'll probably have the election to maybe repunt that. Or maybe take it at the end of the punt, depending on where it is. So he's, I think he's asking for a repunt. Smart move by Matt Cannon after they boomed that one. Yeah, Titterman got him. On the play, both against Bowling Green. Illegal shift on the kicking team. Sideline interference on the coaching staff. The five will be for the previous Replay. Fourth down. And so that negates a terrific punt, which would have given Maryland not the greatest field position. BG able to flip the field. And the penalty, penalty negates all that. Second guy from the bottom on the offensive line. You can see right there. Trying to shift and point it out. Doesn't get it done. And then the other one that's just as frustrating is it's on the sideline warning. The official hitting one of the coaches or potentially players running down on the coverage unit. I guarantee you Mike Jinks is not happy about that. Unless it was maybe him, then he might be the only guy I could yell at. And now Maryland's going to get some pretty good field position. And, well, not exactly. It takes a Bowling Green bounce and dies at about the 31-yard line. <laughs> an amazing punt because I think they only lost about six yards of field position the last one was caught around the 25 this one at the 31 32 able to bail themselves out give this defense a nice long field if you're looking ahead to next week in the mid-american conference here's what's on the schedule on ESPN plus we got uh, Eastern Michigan and Buffalo that's an important Mac game I might be looking at this Southern Miss App State game after how well App State played against Michigan State or Penn State rather a couple years ago upset the Wolverines playing the Nittany Lions top Here's two. a run on first down big production the Terps continue to smash it on the ground and Teon Fleet Davis continues to work it on Bowling Green. And this is how Matt Davis is able to get carries to over 10 guys. They're doing it to the H-back on a jet sweep. They do it to receivers on the jet sweep. They've got a multitude of running backs that will run downhill. And now you see Casey Mill under center again, trying to pound the football and impose this will on the Bowling Green Falcons. They bounce outside on the run and push out of bounds. 
is Ty Johnson. You probably saw some elements of rain here. It's kind of a soft rain well, here. We're, we're at inside. Green. Yeah, we're, we're inside. inside. So it's always soft when we're inside. But <laughs> you see a huge push there by that Maryland left side of that offensive line. And this definitely favors the Terps. They've been running the football effectively. Bowling Green has only really had success through the air. The more rain, the better if you're a Terrapins fan. They run same side and get pushed out of bounds. Anthony McFarland on this carry. Boy, I don't think there's many college football teams, Bobby, that have the diversity in their running game like this Terps team. Oh, they hand it to guys all over the place, and they'll move different guys. You see Anthony McFarland get in the backfield. Then he's playing wing back, getting it on the jet sweep. Matt Cannon is ultra creative. And he doesn't necessarily do it with this up-tempo spread offense. They like to shift in motion and get everybody involved. They go the other way with Johnson, who gets the edge inside the 25. Stutter step inside the 15. And Johnson's just able to outrun safety Jerry McBride, one of the leaders of that defense. And you see this Falcon defense now getting worn down. The, the corners are getting short. You see Johnson get to the sideline. Just a little too fast for McBride. Brandon Harris there able to clean it up, but now you're inside the red zone once again. Hopefully, the Terps will be able to remain penalty free because this is where they got bogged down last time. It's a 19 yard run to the 14 yard line. But Carl Pelini bringing pressure up there for the corner position. Johnson again, getting out of that first would be tackler. I'll tell you, that's where I think Maryland's getting the job done. The first hit tacklers for the Falcons are not stopping that run. And they had the perfect call on Carl Pelini bringing pressure from the top of the screen, the corner they're starting in. As you can take a look right here, pressure coming right off the top. You have a free hitter right here in the hole. And Ty Johnson just too much. This was the perfect call. You see number 55 there. Kobe Coleman, you got to clean it up. You have to make the tackle. You're the unblocked pass. Maryland ready to try to continue to play strong here. Our fourth quarter continues, or I should say starts when we come back. It's the Falcons and the Terps, a 17-14 lead for Maryland. Fourth quarter football when we come back to Dwight Perry. Hashtag Ascot Mondays, baby. Hashtag Ascot Monday. <laughs> Charles was here. That's Charles would do it like this. <laughs> Let me get an ask. <laughs> Can you feel it? Astros Red Sox tomorrow at 8 on ESPN. Monday Night Football is back. First, Sam Donald debuts in Motown to take on the Lions. Then, Todd Gurley and the Rams battle the Raiders. Jets Lions at 7:10. Then Rams Raiders at 10:15. Monday on ESPN. Under these lights, everything is bigger. The pageantry, the playmaking, the stakes. Anything can happen on Saturday night. The college football playoff is coming, and this season, everything matters. Your game face, his khakis, their bling, your black tie, where you sit, where he sits, the height of the grass, the signs you make, or what this lady eats for breakfast. Because the college football playoff is coming, and everything you do matters. No pressure. We really like having Aaron around, but we're concerned he takes his name a bit too literally. Okay. He has to do golf again. Like All rise. House. Bo dominates any game he plays. Checkmate. Bajan. I claim the kingdom. One cup of lemonade. It's time to pack up, kids. NFL Sunday ticket. Get every live game every Sunday at no extra charge when you switch to direct TV. More for your thing. That's our thing. This season, keep your stories interessante, like Dos Equis, the beer Steve Spurrier stopped for every time he was carried off the field. Ding dong, next up, beer. 
Cerveza Express coming through. Dos Equis. Keep it interesante. Are you a college football fan? Come check this out. Show me college football. It's never been easier to watch ESPN3 games right here on Xfinity X1. Introducing ESPN3 on Xfinity X1. The Goodyear blimp doesn't show up for just anybody. So don't be just anybody. Be blimp worthy. Goodyear. More driven. Yeah, let's go back just a moment or two ago when I used the term soft rain. Are you, are you okay with that terminology, Mr. Carpenter? Yeah, it's almost like a mist machine out here. One of the cool zones. It'd be nice if it was like 80 degrees. The guys would enjoy it, but it is a crisp, crisp September evening for Ohio. I got some friends in the truck downstairs who apparently are fooled by my uh, meteorologist terminology occasionally. It's not a driving rain. It's a soft rain. Yeah, it is. I mean, the drops aren't very big, and now we see Maryland running out the double wing, double tight formation. It's like the old single wing. Maryland's been pounding it on the ground. They're going to go there again. End zone. Got it. Touchdown. Maryland rushing for another score. And it's Teon Fleet Davis doing the damage. Going to the big workhorse back, 5'11", 226. Tom McMillan, you see him getting downhill. A great job on the right side of that offensive line, creating a push. No edge to the defense. Fleet Davis finding the pylon. Do we really have a flag? Post play? I'm losing my interest in <laughs> setting up these penalty calls by uh, Jeff Servinsky. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense number 55 is high fiving the fans in the stands. The 15 yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Well, he did a great job of explaining it for us, Dan. That's on Derwin Gray, the left tackle, number 55, all Big Ten last year. High fiving fans in the stands. Now, I'll be critical of some post play penalties. I think that's just natural celebration. As long as there's no taunting going on, it's right down there with the Maryland faithful have all shown up. They're here in the rain. Give the folks something to cheer about. I love that description. Here's the touchdown run. Look at that. Great job finding some pay dirt right there. Bouncing outside. No contain. Carl Polini's going crazy. But you can see the Maryland fans there. Look at my man right there. He's juiced up. He'll give him some love. And watching this Maryland offense, I feel like I may have hopped in the time machine, Dan, and went about 15 years back. Two tight ends, two wings, running the football downhill, taking 20 seconds before you snap the ball. I don't know what kind of game I'm watching. Yeah, we are stepping way back. Matt Canada going old school. Not a guy who used to run the up-tempo offense. He got to Wisconsin. That's a no-no up there. They will pound the ball. I was going to say, at one point, the Terps were down 7-0. So now some fourth quarter separation. Can BG strike back? And they can't do anything huge on the kickoff return from Hargrove. You see the play calling here by Matt Canada, what they're trying to do. Tight ends, wings, jet sweeps. Getting Joshua, Jay Sean Jones in the, in the game, getting him involved. Anthony McFarland on the jet sweep. There you see Ty Johnson faking it, but it's Fleet Davis on the jet sweep. They're running into a bunch of different guys, and then when they're tired, you pound it downhill. The big Fleet Davis coming down, scoring a touchdown, and polishing that drive off right. So now it's an uphill battle for Bowling Green. 
And what the jet sweep does is it forces you to always play that with a safety, a defensive end, an outside linebacker. It's kind of like an option. Now you're going to play 10 on 10, and it's going to force responsibility. So as soon as those guys start cheating, then you don't run it downhill anymore. And maybe some of the backers cheat out. Then you pound it downhill on them with the inside run. Diggy's going to throw on first down. Great pass and catch into Turp territory. The hookup with Quentin Morris gets Bowling Green moving. And you see man-to-man -man being played on the outside. Quentin Morris getting inside. Jared Diggy dropping back, delivering a strike, and a nice little run after the catch by Morris as well. At the Maryland 49, Diggy's going to take the sack. Maryland's pressure. And Brooks, Antoine Brooks, the hero from last week, finishing off the game with the interception. And you see him right here coming in. The pressure's too much. He's coming, I believe, off the top of the screen, coming through there. Unblocked. Pressure all over the place. What a great job. Brad Kolka getting involved in that, too. Daigie's not walking too comfortably either. Brings up second and 18. BG back at their own 42. Plenty of time for Bowling Green. Don't have to do anything crazy, but you need to keep picking up first downs and flipping the field. He wants a home run here, and it's well incomplete. Scott Miller was his target. Remember, Miller had 13 catches last week against Oregon, and now he's coming up lane. Not a good sign. Midway through that corner route, running a little flag, trying to get the runaway with the inside leverage on the corner. Miller now down. You can see him noticeably limping, pulling up on the football. And he's their Mr. Do It Everything. 166 yards last week against Oregon, making plays. And you can see him right here running the out, trying to bend it back. And he starts to pull up lame. Can't go after the football. That would be a huge loss to this Falcon offense. And they're escorting him off the field. So he's not really even going under his own strength you hope that it's maybe just a cramp hamstring Looks, maybe a little hamstring maybe a little calf possibly could be ser more serious than that but scott miller a big part of this falcon offense he's the reason those outside guys and potavon and quentin morris have been having the success they've been having is because they have to double team him the whole time now they'll be able to play a little more too high and get some more help to those outside receivers. Third down and 18 for Bowling Green. Maryland was down 14-10 at the half, but they have survived the elements and... It's third and very long. For Jared Deggy, just don't make a mistake. If you can pin this Terrapin defense back or offense back, hopefully you'll be able to get off the field and get the ball back. Deggy throwing into some traffic, underthrown. He wanted Pudavong. It was going to be a tough third and very, very long. Now fourth down. If the Falcons can pin the Terps deep and somehow muster a three and out, which they haven't been able to do here in the second half, they'd be able to get the ball back around the 50 and have a chance to go get in with plenty of time. There's 13.30 in college football. That's an eternity as long as you're efficient with the football when you have it. There's the punt. And it's going to take a Falcon bounce inside the 20 to about the 17-yard line. Timeout here with Bowling Green on the wrong end of a 24-14 to 14 score with Maryland leading. Here's the hit on Daigie, the Maryland defense leading the charge against the Falcons. backing of American Express. Don't live life without it. We really like having Aaron around, but we're concerned he takes his name a bit too literally. Okay. He has to do golf again. Like All rise. So toot toot is kind of like, I should say, toot toot. That's when somebody's just feeling good about themselves, usually me. 
I never had a four-game losing streak in eight Tell years. Oh, my God. Talk more about yourself. Two, two. Trying to find that wide receiver. The next, I say, Randy Moss. Uh, that should probably be a two, two and some push-ups. I never get any props. Rex. Two, two. This is what the postseason feels like. Two Goliaths squaring up. Can you feel it? Astros Red Sox tomorrow at 8 on ESPN. The college football playoff is coming. And from your game face to your game day rituals, everything you do matters. No pressure. Monday Night Football. Jets, Lions, then Rams, Raiders. Monday on ESPN. It's game night at the Heisman house. Bo dominates any game he plays. Checkmate. Bajon. I claim the kingdom. <clears throat> One cup of lemonade. It's time to pack up, kids. NFL Sunday Ticket. Get every live game every Sunday at no extra charge when you switch to Direct TV. More for your thing. That's our thing. One of the big guns, Scott Miller for Bowling Green on offense, came off limping. Now he's on the bike. Question, Bobby, does that ever really help a player get back to 100%? Well, I don't know if he's going to be 100%. You see the bottle of Flexol right here behind him. Maybe get that thing loosened up a little bit. That might help him out. If it's just a little cramp, the bike could help. Maybe just a little tightening there, but if it's something that's more legitimate, it's gonna, he's going to have a hard time coming back tonight. Kasim Hill on first down, throwing a deep ball, and he's got his man in stride. It's McFarland chased out. What a great throw, and McFarland ran right under it. And this is all part of the Matt Canada motion shift offense. Doing a great job there. A little play action McFarland. They sneak him out of the backfield, leading the way. He runs the wheel, turns it up. And a nice ball by Kasim Hill. They're going for the juggler right here. They don't want to mess around with this game anymore. They want to put more points on the board, pound the football, run the clock out. That's Matt Canada's plan, and he's executing it well right now. A big strike on first down. They're at the BG 32. Looking to maybe put this game away. Back on the ground they go. They run inside. First down pickup for the Terps. Ty Johnson on the carry. And this looks like it's Wisconsin offense in the fourth quarter. They're going to throw some play, play action at you, but they're going to line up and run the ball down your throat. Timeout. And this is a wise timeout by Mike Jinks. If you don't have any chance of winning this game, you're down 10. Still two scores. If you give up a field goal, it's still two scores. Your defense is reeling a little bit. They haven't been tackling well. They've been getting tired. They've been missing gaps. What you have to do is look at them now, and it's appeal to your pride. We're still in this, gentlemen. If we can get a stop right here holding the field goal, we've got enough offense. We feel like we can get two touchdowns. Whether you can or not, you got to sell them on that. And you have to appeal to their pride to hold them out, bring some pressure, try to make something happen in the backfield. Yeah, halftime, this was a 14-10 Bowling Green lead. And it was anybody's game, but in the second half, Matt Canada's Terps have stepped up and delivered offensively. They haven't eliminated the penalties, but they've uh, excelled, especially on the ground. We're too tight, double wing, downhill running. They hand off and they get pushed after the first line of contact. And this continues to be a Teon Fleet Davis run. These runners from Maryland just don't go down on the first hit. BG had it stopped at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a one yard gain, you're picking up the first down. But the one thing that the rain does is you see these tacklers. You know, the offensive line's getting a little bit of push, but the tacklers are there. You've got two and three hats at the football. Guys are wrapping up. Fleet Davis is driving his legs, but he's slick because he's wet. From he's the 11, back on the ground they go. This is the touch again for Fleet Davis. And that's a great job right there to be able to come in and submarine him. Coleman, the middle linebacker, knows what to do. You kill the legs. 
and they're not going anywhere. You have to kill the motor. That's what they teach. That's what they coach it up, especially when it gets wet against a big physical runner like Fleet Davis. Second and seven there at the Bowling Green eight-yard line. Back on the ground, Fleet Davis inside the five to about the two. It's going to be a third and one. They can pick up a first down without scoring a touchdown here. This is a huge third down. It's probably four down territory for Maryland because I'm trying to put the dagger in if I'm Matt Canada. Great opportunity for Bowling Green. I expect Carl Pellini, you got to bring the house here, change the line of scrimmage if you want to have any chance of stopping this physical Maryland running attack. Ball is spotted at the three yard line. On the ground, and did he get in? No, he did not. Going down at about the half yard line, maybe the foot line, but it's a first down. And they'll have four cracks at it. <sighs> See him coming downhill. Brandon Harris doing a good job cutting him off. Ran into his own guy. But when you see an offensive lineman four yards down the field blocking a safety, that's a good thing for a running back. Fleet Davis has gotten a lot of touches today. And they go back to him. Ball is loose on the turf. Recovered by Maryland. I think Kasim Hill got his hands on it. And that's why you have to play this thing out to the very end. You could have seen one of the Falcons scoop that thing up and make a play. You watch it. Fleet Davis trying to hammer it over here. I believe right here you're going to see Coleman come through and put his hat right on that football, if I'm not mistaken. Actually not. Is it Brandon Harris coming across? That's Brandon Harris, number one, scraping across inside. Doing a great job knocking the ball out. Good stick there. End zone. Touchdown, Maryland. The second effort by Ty Johnson gets it in the end zone. And the Terps now with three unanswered touchdowns in this second half. It was just too much. And right there, you've got the guys where they're supposed to be. You have it ready to go. You have Ty Johnson running sideline to sideline. Bam. You've got your safety, Fred Garth, coming up to make the play. And he just slips off the tackle. If you're a coach, there's nothing more you can ask. And it's under review. Of knee maybe down beforehand. Hold down, hoping it looked like he got into me. The one thing I will say about this, we talk about all the different players doing all this different stuff. As we see Ty Johnson, his, his knee knees is, are down. His knee is down. He's back at the half-yard line. Yeah, that will come back. Boy, did he fight, though. I'll tell you. He did, but it's the pursuit right there that helps make it good. Number 17, Carl Brooks, true freshman out of Lansing, Michigan. Coaches really eye on him. Comes over and helps to make sure he gets to the ground, assisting Fred Garth. But back to the point on this, Dan. You look at this. You have Fleet Davis playing tailback. Ty Johnson, Lorenzo Harrison, Anthony McFarland, all those guys playing tailback. You know what they also do? They're also all playing wingback, playing H-back. These guys learn multiple review, positions. The ruling on the field stands as called. Touchdown. Okay. Well, maybe the officials want to get out of here just as bad as everyone else. <laughs> well played. Maryland, a shaky start. First half. A whole lot of things wrong, but the second half, much better. Three unanswered touchdowns, and Maryland ready to take a 2-0 record after this game ends. 31-14, Maryland on top here at Bowling Green. Monday Night Football is back. Kicking off the season with a huge doubleheader. Jets Lions at 710, then Rams Raiders at 1015, Monday on ESPN. The U.S. Open on the ESPN app. Stream first ball to last ball. Download the ESPN app today. The U.S. Open Men's Championship. Tomorrow at 4 on ESPN. Tomorrow, resurgent two-time winner Novak Djokovic faces 2009 champ Juan Martín Del Potro. Past U.S. Open winners battle for championship glory. The Men's Championship tomorrow at 4 on ESPN. 
This is what the postseason feels like. Two Goliaths squaring up. Can you feel it? Astros Red Sox, tomorrow at 8 on ESPN. The college football playoff is coming, and this season, everything matters. Your game face, his khakis, their bling, your black tie, where you sit, where he sits, the height of the grass, the signs you make, or what this lady eats for breakfast. Because the college football playoff is coming, and everything you do matters. No pressure. El Nino? Meat sweats? Aliens. That's the one, okay? And here, a comment is no one because of the alien invasion. In unrelated news, ESPN is giving fans with the best excuses for ditching work free tickets to a day game. And there's nobody here with me. Yeah, it's been a lot of wet weather here at Bowling Green. And most of this rain came out a little bit stronger in the second half. Oh, I think this soft rain you were talking about, Dan, is really firming up. It's starting to really come down a little bit more. You know, the National Weather Service has confirmed that the term soft rain <laughs> is technically accurate and acceptable. So I know you've got a kind of little thing with that, but it's... It's official. Oh, it was soft. It was very misty, but now it's starting to come down with a little more ferocity. It's starting to look like this Terps running attack. <laughs> and Bowling Green has not been able to keep up with Maryland in this second half. A flag on the return. Ravion Hargrove on the return. He took a big hit, but we'll see what the flag is. Timeout for an injured player. I would have to imagine the flag would be on Bowling Green. It's tough to get a penalty on kickoff coverage, but if there's a team that could do it, I would say it's this Terps team tonight because they found a creative way to get penalized each and every quarter. This looks like Hargrove, and we're going to maybe check and see if this is a targeting call. Number 27, 10 yard penalty, first down. So they've got a block in the back there against Bowling Green gonna put him in even a more adverse situation and it'll be curious to see how aggressive Mike Jinx is going to be it's been outscored 21 nil in the second half here you've got a pretty good team you've got Scott Miller on the bench you've got a very talented running back and Drew Claire a very good young quarterback and Jared Nagy let's take a look at the hit here mm. Ooh, helmet to helmet, and he got it from both sides. Yeah, that's tough, and that's that's a little bit of football right there. You got three guys running mm. full, full speed. I'm not sure if you can really gauge that or adjust it. To me, that's just uh, that's one of the tough plays about football that you're going to have. But I don't know how aggressive you want to be if you're Mike Jinx putting some of these guys in harm's way. You got a very good team. You want to make sure you have a good chance to go out and win the MAC, and getting guys hurt is only going to make that more tough. Diggy under center. Now he's going to have to roll out and throw it out of bounds. Boy, that's got intentional grounding written all over it. The officials will confer. And you know what? Matt Canada running down the sidelines. Because it would be a safety. He was in the end zone. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's what they were signaling, safety. Intentional grounding. Offense number two. Though he got outside the tackle box, the ball never made it back to the line of scrimmage. Loss of down, second down. But the call is the same. He thought he was in the end zone when he threw that football. You see him scrambling back right here. Oh, goodness. Oh, oh, oh. So one foot out of the end zone. Really no room to give any penalty yards there. But the two parts of the um, intentional grounding, you have to be outside of the tackle box and like the official said at the last part you have to throw it back to the line of scrimmage credit maryland's defense for spearheading the turks comeback 
see Andrew Clare pounding up in there, helmet off. Has to leave the field now for a play. 12 first downs in the first half, just two in the second half. Scored zero points. Haven't been able to get the running game on track all night. Negative two for the net yardage now. And a lot of that's coming off Jared Deggie's sacks. But Andrew Claire, Claire rushed for over 100 yards against Oregon last week. Only 39 yards, 2.6 per carry this evening. Bowling Green has really struggled. There's a little screen underneath, and it's complete, but nothing after the catch. Diggy's passing numbers have been respectable. The problem is they haven't really hooked up on many long passes. First half, he was able to get some things going. As you saw the big scramble there that gave him the 14 10 lead going into halftime but unfortunately since that last play you know he's had a slant here or there maybe a dig maybe some quick screens but he hasn't had anything of measured success here in the second half tenderman takes a low snap good recovery gets the punt off it won't be very good mm. but it could have been a lot worse terps are going to get some great field position at the bowling green 32. And this is what things start to steamer on you if you're Mike Jakes. You get the penalty, intentional grounding, can't really get out of your end zone, and now your punter, it's a bad snap. I'm not even gonna put that on the punter bobbling it, has to rush to get it off because he doesn't want it blocked. And now you're giving the Terps the ball at the 30, 33 yard line, 32 yard line. Not a great situation, putting your defense on a short field. And I expect another heavy dose of the rushing attack from Matt Kearney on this Terps offense. Kasim Hill's been under center for most every snap. Now the jet sweep and the run. He tried to turn it inside. McFarland fell down. Boy, he could have had six points if he had just kept his footing. And you're seeing the jet sweep attack. They were pounding it downhill with Cleet Davis. Now you see McFarland get on the jet sweep. People are still looking inside. They don't know what's happening, where to go. And McFarland, if he keeps his feet, he might still be running to this point. The misdirection behind the line. If you let it start getting in your mind, then there's guys chasing shadows out here, and it's not even sunny anymore. That was an 18-yard run. They go back to the same spot. Falcons able to stop it there, though, on the McFarland carry. So you see a couple jet sweeps. Don't be surprised, they fake the jet, and then you hand it back inside and start pounding the football. You've got guys looking both ways. It's a very, very difficult thing to defend if you can't hold the perimeter of your defense. And Maryland's done a great job of stretching the perimeter, breaking tackles, and now you see a Bowling Green defense. Hands on their hips, tired. Brandon Harris is trying to get them fired up, their veteran leader there, but they've been getting pushed around at the point of attack. Second down and eight from the 12. They hand off and they pound it inside the five with McFarland on the carry. I mean, we're at the point now, Bobby, where Maryland has run for almost 400 yards and they're going to have possibly three runners that will top 100 yards. Well, Ty Johnson has over 100. Fleet Davis is 10 shy and Harrison is 14 shy at this point. They've got guys lining up. It's a fight to get in the end zone. And you have no idea who's gonna get it because sometimes it's the jet, sometimes it's the deep guy. They lost the footing. That's Fleet Davis who had to kind of balance himself out and then go back to it. Only gets maybe a yard or two down to the one. And if I had to guess, I would say that they're gonna run the football here. I, don't, I would like to see how many pass plays they've even attempted here in the fourth quarter because I can't remember the last one they've yeah. had. The running game was great in the first half. It's just the penalties knocked him out, and they're going to score again. No surprise there. And Fleet Davis carries it for the score. It's 28 unanswered points for this Terps offense all on the ground. Doing a great job. You see Brandon Harris still fighting. He's the leader of that defense, impact player, does a great job. He's going to play till the final whistle. Unfortunately, this Terps offense is too much. They're getting too much movement at the point of attack. 
Maryland hits the PAT, and the Terps have rolled off four unanswered second-half touchdowns. It has been the Terps on the ground that has crushed Bowling Green in this football game. Jet sweeps all over the place, and Maryland ready to go to 2-0. The U.S. Open on the ESPN app. Stream first ball to last ball. Download the ESPN app today. This is what the postseason feels like. Two Goliaths squaring up with their eyes on the same prize. Can you feel it? Astros Red Sox tomorrow at 8 on ESPN. If I have my DVDs and I figure out that I can get every single 30 for 30 documentary on my phone now because I have ESPN Plus. I'm trying a little feng shui. I'm trying to clean up the house. I'm trying to give more space for some of my other collections. I don't need these anymore. Other people, they still need them. They're threatened by technology. I understand that. I'm not. I embrace technology. We really like having Aaron around, but we're concerned he takes his name a bit too literally. Oh. Okay. He has to do golf again. Like All rise. Monday Night Football is back. First, Sam Darnold debuts in Motown to take on the Lions. Then, Todd Gurley and the Rams battle the Raiders. Jets Lions at 7-10. Then Rams Raiders at 10-15. Monday on ESPN. The college football playoff is coming. And from your game face to your game day rituals, everything you do matters. No pressure. Tomorrow, resurgent two-time winner Novak Djokovic faces 2009 champ Juan Martín Del Potro. Past U.S. Open winners battle for championship glory. The Men's Championship tomorrow at 4 on ESPN. The U.S. Open Men's Championship. Tomorrow at 4 on ESPN. Well, you're watching this game unfold. If you missed the first half and you're a Maryland fan, you're glad you did. The second half has been much more enjoyable. And the Terps surviving a penalty-filled first half. And they kept the penalties going in the second half, but the running game finally clicked into place and uh, has taken them to a 38 to 14 lead. Four unanswered touchdowns. And since Bowling Green's last score before the half, Maryland has outgained them by over 300 yards, 300 net yards, which is an unbelievable stat. It's a tribute to the Maryland offense because they haven't done it through the air. This isn't some high flying right. passing attack. Good They've been point. pounding the football up and down for about eight yards of carry. Yeah, these numbers on the ground for Maryland are just off the charts awesome. Well, Lorenzo Harrison is like, you know, eight carries for 86 yards. That's a pretty good day. Oh. Well, that's that's about the third best on the team. I mean, they're averaging close, around eight yards a rush. Lorenzo Harrison's averaging over 10. I guarantee he wants to be that third back with a three with a hundred yard day, giving Maryland three one hundred yard backs in a game that they were trailing at halftime, 14 to 10. Yeah, it's not like they were just crushing Bowling Green early. And so Mike Jinks right here, Andrew Claire out of the game, getting Bryson Denley, the sophomore out of Texas, some reps here. Let him go. Let your big dog get on the sideline. Get, the, get him some reps as well. Don't put too much on Dar D Jared Deggie at this point. You don't want to see a situation where he's getting hit and beat up and could potentially be out for multiple weeks with an injury. Now, Scott Miller has still not returned, and Bowling Green's offense has suffered because of it. Although he hasn't made a lot of noise tonight, you still need him out there as a threat. Well, Scott Miller is drawing double coverage in the slot. So, Poudavon and Morris were able to have the success with single coverage outside. Now that they're gone, or now that Miller's gone, they're able to double more outside. They can load up against the run a little bit more. 
it's a lot more difficult to get move the football and you see BG slowing it down considerably trying to get this game finished up so they can get to the sideline get healthy and get ready for Mac play in a couple weeks Diggy will throw and picked off off the tip and it is Ayinde Ely who makes the interception after the bobbled catch. And I'm not putting that interception on Jared Dagey one bit. He put the ball right on Quentin Morris where he had so many times running that little 8 to 12 down in well. You see him hanging there in the pocket, look off the safety. It's wet. He bends it in, puts it right on Quentin Morris. The ball is tipped up. It's intercepted. Great pass. Unfortunately, it wasn't completed. That would have kept the chains moving too and allowed this Falcon offense to give the defense a much needed rest. See some substitutions here a little bit by Bowling Green on defense too. Just took Mar Marcus Milton out of the game, one of their best defensive players, get him some rest on the sideline. And the turf stay on the ground with Tyrell Pigram under center at quarterback. Well, we we talked about Maryland in the open, Bobby. This game was going to have a completely different vibe for them than what they did last Saturday at FedEx Field. That vibe in the first half, not a good vibe, but they stayed with their strength, the running game, and it's uh, really opened this game up for them now in this fourth quarter. Well, when you come out after an emotional win, it can be very, very difficult to have a good week of practice. You know, they're dealing with the loss of a teammate, a big win, an opponent that, let's face it, you know, it's not the University of Texas. It's not one of the Blue Bloods of college football. They're going on the road. It's a rainy situation. Guys didn't seem focused on a lot of penalties. Some mental penalties. Mental bust that you don't want to see as a coach, but they were able to get it right. It. Give a lot of credit to Matt Canada, who simplified the offense, got him under center, just started pounding the football, let his big offensive line, his powerful running game take over. And it's been terrific since then. Prior to the flag being thrown, timeout, Bowling Green, their second of the half, 30 seconds. Bowling Green calling a timeout, probably substitution, trying to get some guys in the game, get some of their normal starters out, get them healthy. Let's take a look at Maryland's upcoming schedule. They have Temple, then they start Big Ten play. Minnesota, then at Michigan, and then Rutgers. Maryland has a very good chance. Michigan not looking looking better today, but not great against Notre Dame. They could conceivably get on a little bit of roll here and have some nice momentum going into the middle of October. Really hard for any team in the Big Ten East when you got three heavyweights like Michigan State, Ohio State, Penn State, no. Michigan. No. Three, and then you throw the Michigan at the end. That's spoken like a guy who may be more of a green and white guy. Oh, you are evil. And here's a wicked run. Maryland's going to score again. Touchdown, Javon Leakey. Javon on the carry, and they get more production out of another back. The Terps just doing what they want on the ground. And that's disappointing. That's as a, as a head coach and a defensive coordinator. You're seeing some good blocking. You're seeing guys with a lack of effort. The fact that you're getting somebody at the point of attack okay, guys coming underneath blocks, you don't want to see that. But the fact that nobody can get a hand on him, that's very, he's fast, but he's not that fast. Brandon Harris still running hard, Gregory running hard. But you got to be able to wrap, wrap up, make a guy make a cut, get him to the ground. For a team that played so well for so long today, played so hard, Carl Pellini's going to be very disappointed watching the last five or six minutes of this film. You know, the final score is going to be maybe what you expected if you're a Maryland fan. But if you went back and realized, oh, we were trailing by four points at the half, that might be the uh, surprise in this football game. Well, and the game to me turned in the third quarter on the Jarvis Davenport go-ahead touchdown. A third and 20, third and goal from the 22. He's able to get to the sideline on a shallow cross or really a throwaway play, break a tackle, and then run 12 more yards in to put the Terps up 17-14. And it's been history since that. If they get a stop there, you never know. Bowling Green's still up, 14-13. Maybe can hold them off a little bit longer. 
Yeah, you got to figure a team like Maryland says, you know what? You just keep trying to play until you can get that one big play that will break it open. And Bowling Green, for you know, to their credit, they stayed in the game for a reasonably long period of time. But boy, the Terps got the engines revved up, and they have not slowed down. So now we take a look at the Falcons, what they have on the slate coming up. Very winnable game against Eastern Kentucky. Then you get into some Mac play with Miami, Ohio, who's a very good team this year. Veteran quarterback Gus Raglan coming to town. Then two Georgia Tech, and then they're in the Mac the rest of the way. Hopefully they'll be able to come through that stretch, picking up a couple of wins, and get Mike Jinks to get his team a little bit of confidence after a very, very tough non-conference schedule. Yeah, new quarterback now for Bowling Green. Grant Loy, the sophomore, 6'5", 230. And a misread on that play. Turned the wrong way for the handoff, and it's zero on the carry for BG. And you wonder if that's the running back, if that's the quarterback right there, who's that on? Grant Loy played a decent amount last year. I watched him come in the game. Completes the passes. He's a guy that's a tall, strong arm quarterback, 6'5, 230 pounds. He's a redshirt sophomore, and he knows this offense. He understands it. He's been here in this program in his third season now with Mike Jenks. He knows what to do. They just have to go out here and execute, trying to run some clock a little bit, but picking up a first down or two would be nice. From the 20 on the ground, BG carrying to the 25. Charles Lamar pounding up in there. Red shirt junior out of Florida. Trying to get this bowling green offense on track. Get a couple, maybe get a first down here to try to run this clock out. Last thing you want to do is let Maryland have the ball back. Game clock inside two minutes. It has been all Maryland in this second half. They were trailing 14 to 10 at the start of the third quarter. BG keeps it on the ground. Maryland's still calling it up, bringing some heat. The nickelback coming off the bottom of the screen there, trying to force the issue. Falcons now forced the punt. Well, to his credit, Matt Canada's demeanor hasn't really changed a whole lot. He was probably uh, at DEFCON 4 in the first half when his Terps were rolling up penalties right and left. Yeah, but he's a cerebral coach. He's a guy that I don't think has, you know, a ton of, shows a ton of emotion, outward personality during games. Hey. At halftime was probably let's get these penalties fixed. We can yell at films tomorrow. We'll get we'll, we can be upset. There's time for that. Let's just win this game. Let's be disciplined. Let's be focused. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come out. We're gonna get in two tight ends. We're gonna do double wings. We're gonna jet sweeps. We're gonna inside zone downhill. We're gonna try forget a lot of the motion and a lot, a lot of the shifts just a little bit here and there. And let's just try to pound this football. And you saw him do it very successfully in the second half. So whatever he said, and whatever they were able to get across, had a couple penalties coming out at halftime, but have been really pretty good since then. Yeah, the running game was never in question for Maryland today. Even when things were going sideways in the first quarter and the second quarter, the Terps were still getting it done on the ground. And that's why they've got three rushers that have uh, run for almost uh, 100 yards a pop. Well, it was just the massive penalties. That was killing him. That's the one thing that Matt Cannon's probably got to be more distraught with than anything else. It's fellas, we rushed, we rushed the ball. Heck, I don't know the final stats here, but I bet it was close to 450 yards. I mean, I mean, what else could you have them do? They did a great job. But need to throw the ball a little bit better. Had one one turnover that they probably wish they had back. But you know, for what you asked them to do, the penalties were the only thing that killed them. Well, a huge second half is what springboards Maryland to a 45 to 14 win as they drop Mar as the Maryland Terps drop Bowling Green. And again, what a great night of football here. It's some wet weather. 
Final score, 45-14. For my partner, Bobby Carpenter, I'm Dan Gatowski. Thanks for joining us from Bowling Green. Again, one more time, our final score from Doik Perry, Maryland. Huge second half gives them a win here against the Falcons.